This is Nationwide 90 FM, owned and operated by Nationwide News Network. We broadcast from our studios at 6 Bradley Avenue, Kingston 10, Jamaica. Transmitting on the FM 90 band. 90.3 from Peters Rock in St. Andrew and Murphy Hill in St. Anne. Serving Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Catherine, St. Anne, parts of Clarendon, St. Mary and St. Thomas. 90.5 from Huntley in Manchester. Transmitting to St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, Manchester, Clarendon, rural St. Andrew and parts of St. Thomas. And 90.7 from Cooper's Hill in St. Andrew and Flower Hill in St. James. Serving Westmoreland, Hanover, St. James, sections of Trelawney. Kingston, St. Catherine, Clarendon, St. Mary, Portland, and St. Anne. Nationwide 90 FM also broadcasts on the World Wide Web on NationwideRadioJM.com and on Flow on Channel 916. Nationwide 90 FM, a revolution in media. You're listening to Nationwide 90 FM. The time is... 6 o'clock. From the studios of Nationwide Radio. Morning Radio the right way. It's Nationwide This Morning. A very good morning to you. I'm Atona Thomas. Coming up in the news at 6 for this morning, Monday, April 15, 2024. Rival groups in the Jamaican diaspora jostling for recognition. There's a growing concern about the impact of a lack of water on the elderly. Met Service says a dry spell expected to last for the next three months. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the government's new startup housing program is designed to provide suitable living structures for young Jamaicans seeking to live and work in urban areas. In regional news, the UN has welcomed the establishment of a transitional council in Haiti. In international news, world leaders are urging Israel not to retaliate after Iran attack. In sports, a third Jamaican attains Paris Olympics automatic qualifying mark in the discus throw. And in business, oil prices fell on Monday after Iran's reprisal attack on Israel over the weekend. The details after the break. Easter is a time for family, fun, and celebration. And at Chris and Charles, we believe that no bunny compares to you. Whether you're planning to party or going on vacation, Chris and Charles has low competitive rates and no guarantor up to $2 million. Why wait? Call 876-920-4189 or WhatsApp 876-838-9028 for loan options. Conditions apply. When you think loans, think Chris and Charles. Catch the first news of the day. A comprehensive package of local, international, sports, and business news. The news at 6 on Nationwide 90 FM. Now to the details. Tensions are high amid a dispute involving rival groups in the Jamaican diaspora and the Jamaican government. This as a faction within the diaspora registered itself using the same name as the pre-existing Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, GJDC. The GJDC is recognized by the Jamaican government. But a new group which has registered itself by the same name and which has been using a logo bearing a striking resemblance to that used by the GJDC has been causing confusion among Jamaicans living overseas. The GJDC is set to host its 10th biennial conference in Montego Bay, St. James in June this year. But the new group, which includes the likes of Dr. Rupert Francis and former FBI Special Agent Wilfred Rattigan, has also advertised a conference for that same period at the same venue. The new group has been sending correspondence to potential invitees, causing confusion about which diaspora conference and group is the one being backed by the Holness administration. In a press statement last Friday, 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs expressed grave concern over the distribution of promotional material bearing what it described as a striking resemblance to the minister's official communication for the conference and threatened legal action against the group. The minister accused those responsible for the creation of the new group of deliberately sowing confusion to mislead members of the diaspora. Now, as people across the country continue to grapple with the dry conditions across several parishes, there is a growing concern about the impact of a lack of water on the elderly. The concern is being expressed by the Executive Director of the Mona Aging and Wellness Center, Professor Denise Eldemeyer Scherer. A lot of older people have muscle problems, arthritis, and even just frailty, and they cannot carry containers for distances. In addition, bending can also be an issue, again, due to the arthritis, hip problems, back problems. So when family members put the water in a um, bucket in the bathroom, they can't bend to get it out to flush the toilet, and they can't bend to get it to bathe because you have to throw it over yourselves. Older people may use more water due to the ageing changes, due to frequency of, of passing urine. If incontinent, they may need to bathe or wash more frequently, again using more water. The National Water Commission, NWC, says it could be forced into imposing water lock-offs at night in the corporate area as both the Mona Reservoir and Hermitage Dam are being adversely affected by the drought. There has been a steady decline in storage levels at the facilities in recent weeks. Professor Eldemeyer Scherer says the lack of water can also have a negative effect on the mental health of the elderly. There are studies, one that I read was from China, showing that not having adequate access to water actually causes mental health issues. And it's easy to see why, because if you're not able to wash yourself as regularly, you're losing a little urine. And remember, we have diabetics here who can lose urine because of high sugar. You're very sensitive of being having a smell and therefore one can see the stress. The fact that you have to call somebody to flush the toilet for you when you want your independence, again, you can see the possibilities for stress. Therefore, we have to remember the mental health issues. Professor Denise Eldemeyer Scherer, the Executive Director of the Mona Aging and Wellness Center. Principal Director of the Met Service, Evan Thompson, says the dry spell should continue to affect western parishes over the next three months, even as above-average rainfall is projected for the rest of the island. Looking at the outlook, though, the rainfall outlook for April, May, and June, we see that there is some improvement that is likely to occur. It probably will not set in immediately because we are in the month of April, and as we see in this forecast here, or the outlook, it shows that the western part of the island will continue to experience quite a bit of dryness, even more so than the rest of the country. Others will gradually start to see the rainfall coming in, and we expect it to become above normal, but this might happen more toward the end of this period. This is in May, in June, when we expect the secondary rainfall peak to occur. Mr. Thompson says that Jamaica experienced below average rainfall in January and February this year after rainfall was higher than the norm in November and December last year. As we move to look back at October 2023, we see where the levels of rainfall, they were actually just over 80% of normal, which means that it was below what is usually expected for the rainfall season, which kind of sets us back. We normally expect um, a, a good amount of rainfall, an appreciable amount of rainfall in that rainfall season to take us right through the dry season. So we saw that we experienced about 80%. Then in November, it went up over 100%, yes. And December also, we had significantly above normal rainfall. But then we saw the dip occurring in January, and that is when the very dry conditions started to set in. Drought conditions were gradually being experienced moving into February. Evan Thompson, Principal Director of the Met Service. 
Meanwhile, Managing Director of the Water Resources Authority, Peter Clark, says the country's rivers are also being affected by the lack of rainfall since the start of the year. He cited Plant and Garden River in St. Thomas as an example. Plant and Garden is the only major river on the island that does not flow into or does not flow in a northerly or southerly direction. There is a major concern because our rivers, which are largely rain-fed and responding to the lack of rain, it shows that they are now down in terms of levels. What we've done, we've looked at some selected rivers with regards to their flows. So with regards to the Plant and Garden River, for last month it, was, it had a flow of 102 million gallons per day. And in February right now, it has 24 million gallons per day. Last year, this time, it was 5.7 million gallons. So this, these drops are significant. Peter Clark, Managing Director of the Water Resources Authority. And amid the soaring temperatures and punishing heat, beverage companies have had to ramp up production to meet demand from consumers. And that's according to the chairman of Wisinko, William Mafood. We just completed installing two new production lines, one for sweet beverages, carbonated beverages, and another water line, which are those who are finished and um, completed, the last one in, in end of February, early March. We are now able to meet the needs. Last year we had some challenges, but this year we will definitely have adequate supplies for the market because we do see growing demand with the heat that we're experiencing right now. At the same time, Mr. Mafood says there is the possibility of price increases due largely to inflationary pressures. You know, there have been some increases in areas of production, specifically in areas like labor, as the labor market tightens and as, um, as those inflationary pressures take, take everybody, including manufacturers and any, any industry basically, has those inflationary pressures. We may have to review prices, but we have not had and will not have any excessive price increases. I don't anticipate anything significant that is going to be a burden on consumers. William Mafood, a chairman of Wisinko. Mayor of Kingston, Andrew Swaby, has accused his deputy, Councillor Delroy Williams, of being unable to accept the fact that the opposition PNP is now in charge of the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KCMC. Mayor Swaby made the argument in a recent statement to the media. He was reacting to concerns raised by Councillor Williams about the composition of committees in the KCMC. Mahira Stewart has more in the support. In a lengthy media release, Mayor Swaby accuses his deputy of disrespecting the office of the mayor, bypassing protocol, and disregarding formalities. Swaby says it appears Williams is having a hard time accepting that the People's National Party is now in charge of the municipal corporation. The Jamaica Labour Party lost control of the KSAMC following February's local government elections. While both parties won 20 of the 40 divisions up for grabs across the city and its suburbs, the PNP won the right to elect the mayor by virtue of its success in the popular vote. Both parties have failed to come to a consensus on the composition of committees in light of the even split of divisions. Mayor Swaby says he's unaware of any specific legal guidelines governing how to populate committees when there's an equal number of councillors in the council. He says Councillor Williams has presented a distorted view of efforts to name the committees. He says suggestions that his actions contravene legal or established norms are misleading. According to Mayor Swaby, the KSAMC has never faced a 2020 tie. He says Councillor Williams's assertions that the committee compositions do not reflect the electoral results of February 26 ignore what he says is the undeniable fact that the PNP controls the council. He says that reality should be recognized regardless of Williams' personal acceptance. Swaby says the suggestion that reducing the number of JLP councillors on a committee will reduce transparency is baseless and illogical. 
He says what undermined transparency and accountability was Williams' administration's failure to accept resolutions from the minority caucus, their refusal to answer questions from the group, and their outright avoidance of meetings to discuss or consider resolutions related to building and planning. Swaby describes Williams' approach as a distortion of the facts. He says this does not serve the public interest and fails to uphold transparency and accountability. Mahiri Stewart for Nationwide News. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the government's new startup housing program is designed to provide suitable living structures for young Jamaicans seeking to live and work in urban areas. The Prime Minister was speaking during a handing over ceremony for the new social housing program in the constituency of East Central St. Andrew recently. In communities like these, as, and as I look around the audience that is gathered, I see a lot of young people and uh, they want something like this. What they want is they want structure. So they want to have proper access to their, their premises and they want well-built premises, which is why we announced a plan that we're going to be building what is called the start-up homes. So this is for young people who they don't have a large household. They want to live in proximity to where they work, that they can use their NHD benefit and buy their startup house. Prime Minister Holness announced the housing program during his contribution to the budget debate last month. 264 units currently under construction at Vineyard Town and Howard Avenue in St. Andrew will be sold under the program. The Prime Minister says the program will allow the beneficiaries to receive benefits if they choose to sell the unit to the National Housing Trust. So it's a smaller solution, a one-bedroom, maybe a two-bedroom. Small solution. Usually it probably will be apartment-type housing, apartment-type dwelling. And we will have young people, we'll specify the age range uh, in their 20s and 30s, who would be able to use their NHD benefit and buy these startup units with a buyback clause that when their circumstances change in your 20s and 30s, you're a, a bachelor or a bachelorette. And then who knows? Ten years, five years, eight years after, your circumstances change. And so you need another bedroom. So you could then sell back that unit to the NHD. And you would get your NHD benefit once again. Prime Minister Andrew Holness. And that's it for the local segment of the news. Up next, regional and international. For all your electrical needs, visit ABC Electrical Sales. They stock a wide variety of electrical supplies including plugs, switches, panel boards and conduits, plus energy saving fixtures. ABC Electrical Sales stocks brands like GE, Siemens, Philips, Cutler Hammer and Allen Bradley. They also offer free island-wide delivery just to suit your needs. Visit them at Shop 8 Hackley Park Plaza, Kingston 10 or call 876-754-3714-5 or 876-754-3825-8. APC Electrical Sales, for a better choice in the electrical business. In regional and international news this morning, regional news, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has welcomed the establishment of a transitional council in Haiti. The council is tasked with choosing new political leadership and setting up elections in the crisis-torn Caricom country. In a statement, Guterres urged all Haitian stakeholders to continue making progress in putting in place transitional governance arrangements, including the timely appointment of an interim prime minister and government. He also urged the speedy nomination of members of the Provisional Electoral Council. Guterres is calling on the international community to contribute to multinational security support mission authorized last year by the UN Security Council. Haiti announced the establishment of the council last Friday. In international news now, world leaders are urging Israel not to retaliate 
after Iran launched an attack involving hundreds of drones, ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. British Foreign Secretary David Cameron says the UK does not support a retaliatory strike, while French President Emmanuel Macron said Paris will try to convince Israel that it must not respond by escalating. And U.S. President Joe Biden has warned Israel that the U.S. will not participate in any retaliatory strikes on Iran. The Iranian attack on Saturday, less than two weeks after a suspected Israeli strike in Syria that killed two Iranian generals in an Iranian consular building, marked the first time Iran has launched a direct military assault on Israel. This despite decades of enmity dating back to the country's 1979 Islamic Revolution. An Israeli military spokesman said 99% of the drones and missiles launched by Iran were intercepted. And that's it for regional and international. Up next, sports. We have the expertise for drilling and demolition We have the power tools for plumbers and electricians Fun select tools, free parts and free repairs Free parts, free repairs In two to three years Hilton, available at Delta Supply 106 Hagley Park Road Call us at 876-302-61124. Delta Supply. We service what we sell. Jumpstart your fitness goals with Express Fitness. Sign up today and restart your fitness journey at an Express Fitness location near you. Enjoy safe, comfortable, and well-equipped gyms from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily. Call 554-5180 for a full listing of our open locations. Express Fitness. Express Fitness. Your goal. Our mission. Wayne, it happened again. People keep coming up to me, bigging up Flow Yard and Road. One lady stopped me in the supermarket to say she loves Yard and Road because she gets both internet and mobile in one plan and how much money she saves. Then I saw this guy who told me that the internet speed is super fast. Guy? What guy? No, and his girlfriend. She's a blogger, so she uses the unlimited social media when she's on the road. I knew they would love it. Told you so. No, I told you so. No, I told you so. Get Flow Yard and Road, the one for all today. Visit discoverflow.co or a Flow store for more information. Information. In your morning sports report, former Edwin Allen High School star Jay Stoner became the third Jamaican to achieve the qualifying standard in the men's discus for this summer's Olympic Games in Paris. Stoner logged a new lifetime best at 69.05 meters to finish second at the Oklahoma Throws Series World Invitational on Sunday. Stoner beat his previous best of 68.64 meters. He joins Ralford Mullings and Travis Michael as Jamaicans who've gone past the automatic 67.0, that 67.20 meters qualifying standard for the Olympics. Lithuania's Mikelas Alekna won the event in Oklahoma with a new world record throw of 74.14 meters, beating the previous oldest men's world record on the books of 74.08 meters by Jürgen Schultz of the Old East Germany 38 years ago. To some cricket news now, new champions will be crowned in this year's JCA Senior Cup cricket competition. Defending champions at St. Catherine's CC were knocked out at the semifinal stage after losing first innings points to Kingston Cricket Club in a drawn game at the Kensington Park on Sunday. In the other semifinal at Three Hill in St. Mary, the Jamaica Defence Force beat St. Mary Cricket Association by nine wickets also on Sunday. The two-day final between Kingston and the JDF is set for April 27 and 28 at a venue yet to be confirmed. 
Finally, in your morning sports, Antonia Shepard scored a brace in the 64th and 72nd minutes to steer Dance's pen to a 2-0 win over Bath in the surge at St. Thomas Major League on Sunday. In another game, end of first round finalist Seaforth dropped points for the first time this season when they were held to a goalless draw by Port Morand All-Stars. Seaforth will now face White Horses in the end of round final on Wednesday at York Oval. And that's it for your morning sports. Operate a business in the manufacturing or agro processing industry? Sajikor Bank has a loan just for you. Sajikor Bank Manufacturing and Agro Processing Loan. Borrow up to 50 million with up to 12 years to repay. Financing you can use to retool, expand, improve efficiencies, or gear up for export. Speak with a business banker today. Sajikor Bank Manufacturing and Agro Processing Loan. Just another way Sajikor Bank is taking care of business. Conditions apply. In business this morning, oil prices fell on Monday after Iran's reprisal attack on Israel over the weekend. Brent crude, a key benchmark for oil prices internationally, was lower but still trading close to 90 US dollars a barrel on Monday morning. Prices had already risen in expectation of action by Iran, with Brent crude nearing a six-month high last week. Analysts say the markets would be looking to see how the conflict could affect global supply chains. Oil price fluctuations can cause ripple effects across the world due to countries being heavily reliant on the commodity, which is used to produce fuels such as petrol and diesel. Fuel and energy prices have been a major driver behind the higher cost of living worldwide in the past couple of years. When Russia invaded Ukraine in 2022, oil prices soared to 120 US dollars per barrel over supply fares as Western nations imposed sanctions on Russia, one of the world's major oil exporters. The jump led to not only higher prices at the pumps, but also countless other goods and businesses adjusted their prices to cover higher costs. Analysts say Israel's reaction to the attack would be key for global markets in the days and weeks ahead. President Joe Biden has been urged to ban imports of Chinese-made electric cars to the U.S. The chair of the Senate Banking Committee, Senator Sherrod Brown, wrote that Chinese electric vehicles were an existential threat to the American auto industry. His comments are the strongest yet by any U.S. lawmaker on the issue, while others have called for steep tariffs to keep Chinese electric vehicles, EVs, out of the country. In February, the White House said the U.S. was opening an investigation into whether Chinese cars oppose a national security risk. Senator Brown said in a video on the social media platform Form X, formerly Twitter, quote, We cannot allow China to bring its government back to cheating to the American auto industry, end quote. Senator Brown, who is a Democrat from the car producing state of Ohio, is seeking to win a fourth term in office in November's election. Finally, now in foreign exchange trading this morning, the Jamaican dollar will open trading today, selling for an average $156.17 against the benchmark U.S. dollar. The Jamaican dollar will open trading this morning, selling for an average $113.45 against the Canadian. And finally, the Jamaican dollar will open trading this morning, selling for an average $194.60 against the British pound. That's it for business this morning. For all
all your musical needs, visit the Music Mart, the most complete music store in Jamaica. Telephone 876-960-7712. The time brought to you by the Music Mart is... 628. Call me shrewd. I am getting in when the markets are attractively priced. Call me smart. I am getting set to capitalize when the markets have increased potential. Call me savvy. I have a mix of wise investments, so I'm earning no matter the season. They're all investing in Sagico Investments, Sigma Global Funds, like our US dollar Sigma Global Equity and Sigma Real Growth. Never settle for less than your dreams. Start investing now in Sigma Global Funds. Call 888-SAGICOR to speak with a Sagico Investments Wealth Advisor. Supply. Stop buying expensive toner cartridges. Global Inc. is now selling new factory direct generic toners. Remove factory sales, install and print. Engineer to work first time every time. Certified for use in HP and Brother printers. Worry-free affordable printing for your peace of mind. Money saved is money earned. We deliver island-wide. 754-7444 or 1-888-NEED-INC. Never run out of toner again. Global Inc.
A very good morning to you. Good morning to you. You're tuned in to Nationwide this morning, NTM, The Big Show. Thank you so much for coming on over and joining us in the space. Very, very happy to have you this Monday morning, Monday, April 15, 2024. Middling the month. Yeah, moving nicely along. I'm Tana Thomas. Morning, and I'm George Davis. Hey to you, George. Morning, 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 morning. Had a good weekend? Yes, actually. Um, I had Sunday was, you know why Sunday was special? For one thing. You cooked? No, nah, man. <laughs> Sunday was special. <laughs> give, me, give me a drum roll. You have a drum roll? You have a drum roll? You have a drum roll? Like, yeah. You have a drum roll? You might find a drum roll. I thought you were going to say you cooked, no, man. I, I, something better than that. Oh, something better? Something better oh. than that happened on oh. Sunday. Oh. Okay. On Sunday, mm-hmm. Tona of the clan Thomas. Roll the drum. Roll the drum. <laughs> All right. Pull it now. On Sunday, Liverpool lost in the English Premier League. Beaten. 1-0 oh. at home. She said, oh, she didn't understand what I'm going to looking. Wait, Natana. I know my side, so I'm going to carry. <laughs> so after Liverpool fluffed their lines badly. No, my team... Crap, we all know. So on Saturday, we drew when we should have lost. We were awful as usual, but we drew. Fine. That's, 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 that's not of note. Liverpool lose one love. And I said, my Sunday is fantastic. <laughs> and then, can I get another drum roll, Mr. King? Please. <laughs> and then, Tana, Arsenal lose two love. <laughs> <laughs> no, Tana. I went. I, I said to my God, I said, God, why you give me so much pun this Sunday? <laughs> there are so many people wanting, you know, a, a boost, wanting something to cheer them up. We're gonna take, we're gonna accept Liverpool losing alone, you know. Mm-hmm. But then God give me Arsenal. Arsenal. Look, oh, but Tana, man, I was, I was happy. There, nothing could have gone wrong for me yesterday after that. Do we have so, any Liverpool and Arsenal fans? Plenty in our of them. Chat? Plenty of them. That's their metro one, but. <laughs> I know for sure that there are a lot of Manu fans yeah, man. in this chat. No, no but it, for example, Margo says Manu to the world. Yeah, I know of the Manu fans in the NNN YouTube chat, but I'm not sure about the Liverpool and Arsenal fans. Sweet me. But Sweet come me. out, Liverpool and Arsenal fans. Sweet me <laughs> yesterday, so nothing couldn't go wrong after that. What is not sweet, Tana? Yeah. What is not sweet? Is this battle brewing in the diaspora? Mm-hmm. What is happening with the parallel conferences is nothing more than an attempt. Well, you know what? I'm not even going to say it that way. It is a call for attention, one. It will cause confusion because it is already causing confusion. I know people will impute motive to it and maybe it is correct for motive to be imputed to it. What I will say is that Jamaica is not winning right now, as Sasko would say. I had the opportunity to participate in one of the debates for the election to one of the diaspora councils in the state. I think it was for the southern region. I actually moderated that debate and the, the engagement was very good. The Zoom, we had, a, we had, we had well, well over 120 people on it, or 140, and the engagement was strong. So the diaspora really keyed in to what is happening in Jamaica. But when you read this report by Harold Bailey in The Observer and, and, and the story we carried in our, to lead the news at six, you realize that there are forces at play There are people on strings and there are people in the background pulling those strings. How do you set up an organization, register it as the name of the organization that has been going for years, book at the same venue that that forerunning organization has blocked out for its annual conference. Not only that, you use the, 
well, let me not say the same logo. You use a logo bearing a striking resemblance, that which they are using. You use the same name, the same abbreviation. Clearly, you are out to sow confusion, but maybe you're sowing confusion to get attention. There's a key part of Bailey's story from The Observer that I want to tell the listeners about. It says, The Global Jamaica Diaspora Council has been registered in the United States by the new group. Let's call them the faction. The faction went ahead and registered the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council in the state of Florida. That registration will also be done, the faction says, in other states, as well as with the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service in the U.S. The spokesperson for the faction says, once registration with the IRS is complete, current office holders of the forerunning Global Jamaica Diaspora Council will no longer be able to operate as such. You hear Mr. Tala? It's just as if we had an organization here. Call it the four percenters. We've been working for years as the four percenters. Someone comes, registers a group, calls it four percenters. You're president, I'm chairman. Registration with the IRS means that you and I can't act as, 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 as four percenters officials anymore because we are not the registered entity under the IRS. So we have no standing. Standing now goes to the faction that comes new claiming that they are the real leaders of the four percenters. That's exactly what is happening here. Now, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has on its website an extensive write-up about the Global Diaspora Council, the GJDC, comprising 30 members. It lists out all the elected members here. There are members not just from the United States, but from Canada, from Europe, Asia and the Pacific, Africa, the Caribbean, the Middle East, Latin America. Then there are sector-based members, a member in charge of art, sport and culture, citizen security, commerce, development issues, education, faith-based community, health and wellness, environment, agriculture. There's also what is called a discretionary member, one Dr. Sylvanus Thompson, who's based in Toronto, Canada. And then there, of course, is a GJDC Youth Member Council with Asha Richards, Renee Miller, Vanessa Myrie, Samaya Miller, and Shamara Fletcher, along with Stephen Gettin. So what the faction is doing is to ape that organization in name, appearance, and likeness. The IRS registration is intended to delegitimize all of those people and to delegitimize the GJDC forerunning organization as we know it. The obvious question is, for what? Dr. Rupert Francis, one of the members behind the faction, says, for years, he and others have been calling on the Jamaican government to give an ear to members in the diaspora who are unhappy with the direction of the country, with what the country is doing to fight corruption, with what the country is doing to protect, offer basic um, security to people living here, what the country is doing on the economic front. They say they are unhappy. They have been asking for audience with the government. The government has not been paying them any mind. That's the claim. And so they've gone to extreme measures. Note the various protests that they've lined up against the government in the USA. They had one recently, I think it was in D.C. They say they have others planned for other states. And they say this is the ultimate call for attention. They're doing this because they want the government to bring them in a room and engage them. Dr. Rupert Francis, former captain in the Jamaica Defense Force, he along with Wilfred Rattigan, FBI special agent, you know him well, they are the ones leading this push. So we ask the question, what does the diaspora want? Or what does that faction in the diaspora want? And how far are they willing to go to get it? How informed is this group? I note 
in their correspondence they speak of they want to talk to donor organizations about how to treat Jamaica. Um, there's some misinformation there. Donor organizations, donors to Jamaica, I don't know of them. Yeah, so you can tell me, they, they can tell me who the donors are, that they'll talk to about their donations to Jamaica. But it all seems highly contrived. It all seems highly damaging to Jamaica. It all seems as if, you know what? I am willing to burn the house down in order to be able to occupy a room at the back. Does that make sense? Which room are you going to occupy when you burn it down? It's the same thing, the trap. It's the same trap our politicians fall into. When a party is in opposition and it says for all the world to hear that the government is corrupt, members of the government are corrupt, in a clear sign that they're not thinking well and perhaps they're a bit idiotic in their pronouncements, they don't realize that what they effectively are saying is that politicians all around are corrupt so when they occupy government nobody's going to say well okay the party that was there before you was corrupt but you come you are not corrupt no it stains so people think that politicians are corrupt and that is driven largely by what politicians say about corruption and their colleagues who are in government it's a fact it's the same way here this faction of the diaspora that says they are fighting for these things. They want the government to listen to them. Really? You want the government to listen to you or you want the government to do what you say the government must do? And if the government doesn't do it, that means the government is not listening to you. So, we need to hear. We're going to try to get, them, get to them, the organizers. What is it that you want? What are you willing to pay to get that thing that you want? Are you willing to burn down the house to occupy the room at the back? Is Jamaica looking smart or stronger for what you are doing and how you are doing it? You are willing to press the nuclear button on brand Jamaica in order to be able to contribute to brand Jamaica. You see what I did there? Mm -hmm. That makes sense to you? Mr. Francis, Mr. Rattigan, I hate using this phrase, but make it make sense for me. Make it make sense for all of us looking on and watching. Two conferences in Montego Bay, one by a forerunning organization, one by a, an organization by, a, by, by one by an organization created by a faction. Same name, same logo, same this, same that. A bit of sameness. What a pricky this morning. It's hard to deal with a nation with different races When every day you awoke there are newly faces No brotherly love, no sisterly love for there are none And nothing to erase from each night our rebel traces Yet they talk about love They talk about love They talk about love, love, love Sweet love Listen. Then in the eyes of vision fight for more power Brotherly love But it's easier to write a story in a longer hour Brotherly love it's this morning on Nationwide 90 FM. The time is 6.47. Shake and go with true shake. Shake and go. Grab a true shake and go. When we have to put in the work, but the moving slow. Grab a true shake and go. School time and on talk time. Office study yard brain full time. Grab a true shake and go. When we up in the gym, we have to stay healthy and fit. Grab a true shake and go. Shake and go with true.
true shake packed with nine grams of protein 24 key vitamins and minerals to keep you going grab a true shake and go Call me shrewd. I am getting in when the markets are attractively priced. Call me smart. I am getting set to capitalize when the markets have increased potential. Call me savvy. I have a mix of wise investments, so I'm earning no matter the season. They're all investing in Sajiko Investments Sigma Global Funds, like our US dollar Sigma Global Equity and Sigma Real Growth. Never settle for less than your dreams. Start investing now in Sigma Global Funds. Call 888-SAJIKO to speak with a Sajiko Investments Wealth Advisor. Condition and supply. Tano for Street Smarts One with the gentleman Lord Lou McLean from the El Shaddai Taxi Company. Good morning, Lord Lou. Good morning, good morning, George. Morning, morning, partner. Hey, to you, Ludlow. Our listeners are more friends, public, and all our YouTubers, and everyone tuning in. Uh, some areas are uh, partly cloudy, and um, some clouds above. I can see some cirrus, some um, nimbus, and some cumulus strata. So it's, it's you know, mixed. The the situation on the road, though, if, you don't, if you're coming from the more area, you're going to find it really, really challenging at this time. You're leaving Elsha or any of those eastern schemes there, 60s, 70s, and you're using that main road. By the way, the lights are not working. That's the one that enters into the, the east community, 60s and all of that, 5s. It's not working. And uh, I believe the one at Brayton is not working either. One by the intersection, they call it the vicinity of 85. That one is not working. But there's a lot of traffic heading towards the Brayton Nugget area. Traffic is also on Port Anderson Road. Traffic is on Brayton Parkway and also Brayton, uh, heading out to Municipal Boulevard, heading out to the Mandela Highway. So it's a really busy Monday morning. And Mandela, on the eastbound side, busy, but you, you, you'll find good movement heading towards Six Miles. And uh, on Six Miles, turning onto Duane Drive, traffic onto Duane Drive, but going further towards uh, Abbeville, then going across to the vicinity of uh, Perkins Estate, you're going to find a long line of traffic trying to get onto Reddy's Road. And then when you get onto Reddy's Road, you're going to see a long line of traffic coming off like Queen Hill, Forest Hill, all the way up. So it's a really, really busy Monday morning. It's our first support for the morning until about 7 8 minutes. Back to you, George, in the studios. Thank you, Ludlow. <laughs> Ludlow, what are you there at the streets? Trying to sound like Todd and feeling badly. <laughs> Yeah, the word, the word, well, well, no, hey to you, Lord Louis, trademark tone. I don't, I don't want to say that, but that is what they say to the same, you know, sound. Thank you, Lord Louis. There you go. There, we can't deal that. No, no, no. <laughs> Time now for your word of the day, spelled R E M U N E R A T E, spelled. R E M U N E R A T E. Remunerate. 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 One you're familiar with, remunerate is your word of the day, and it means to pay or reward for work or trouble. To pay or reward for work or trouble. Remunerate, spelled R E M U N E R A T E. And a dictionary document is telling us this morning that remunerate, it's an old word, was first recorded between 1515 and 1525. First recorded between 1515 and 1525. To use it in a sentence, after completing the project ahead of schedule, the company was quick to remunerate, to pay the team for their hard work. Another for you provided by dictionary.com as a token of appreciation the organization will remunerate all volunteers for their dedication and commitment. Remunerate is your word of the day, simply meaning to pay or reward for work or trouble, spelled R-E-M-U-N-E-R-A-T-E. That's your word of the day. It's a verb. I can see how you guys can use this one in a sentence in your daily lives. Remunerate. Remunerate, remunerate. You know, the... I thought you were about to say there's a song with the word remunerate. Actually, <laughs> actually, no. No, there, you know. There, there isn't. 
Not no, I'm searching my memory bank. No, Tana. Is there one music? Oh, the first or the real word or whatever. Can I recall someone say remunerate or something that says pay or give yeah, me man. money? Yeah, man. What do you pass out with pay? What do you pay? But, but not 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 the word remunerate. Mm -hmm. Remuneration. Um, wait a minute. There may be. No, <laughs> I'm thinking of a of a like a burning spear or something with no mm -hmm. no remunerate. No remunerate. But, so the people so so the people Mr. King catch him free, you know. People them say Mr. King play too much bomb Marley. Uh, <laughs> so that's why he started from what he starts this morning. <laughs> <laughs> he went for something different. He went to the left field. Yeah, yeah, well Jermaine, you have to appeal to our different audiences. <laughs> so so as as he's saying around the listeners, you know, viewers. It's not organized without Rasta. In other words, Tana, yeah. without Rasta, it's not organized. You should trademark that. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. no, a long time saying that, Tana. That's a way for That's pretty it's king. Uh, but, oh. Yeah, yeah. Really. Gotcha. Yeah, no, organized. All right, so you need to come up with something original, <laughs> Jermaine. Yeah, something man. for you that, that talks about Rasta. King, I challenge you to have the same impact musically this week without playing one Bob Marley. Show them say you're bad like that. Easy thing. Easy he thing. says simple stuff. Simple thing. Simple stuff. You, of course it started. But last night, last night I went to, my friend had a birthday party. Mm -hmm. um, he was what? He's now what? 62? Mm. I think so, yeah. So it was at Ribby's. The, mm -hmm. the, the, right. So I went. I left about 9.30 because, of course, I have to watch the clock. Mm -hmm. But the music, Donna, jeez, um, Craig Ross was at the control. And that, that, that goes without saying. That, go, that goes without saying. The Jeremy man plays some boss. tune last night. Jeez, yeah. Um, jeez. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I always find before we go to our features that the events such as Footloose and Mellow Vibes and all of that, I tend to have a better time than the parties with the younger crowd or music. He made an observation to me. He said, George, look, every man and wo was dancing with a woman in there. And he said, if I did your crowd, young people crowd, half I man them over there, so half I woman, it was a woman them over there, so no, or the or, man, man no, about the hand, me you, have, you have the men on one side and then you have the women on the other side with their phones up. That's what he was saying. Yeah, That's what he was saying. very few people are on their phones making reels. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah man. Features at the top of the hour of the news. Today on Living Well, the dangers of not getting enough sleep. As we look at the health of the Jamaican population on a whole, there are many other things that need to be addressed. Sleep is one of these factors. Now, having done my own unofficial analysis and taking numbers from our big neighbors to the north, we are becoming more and more sleep deprived. I would like to focus first on our children, our teens to be exact. Sleep experts agree that teens need at least nine hours of sleep a night. But by 2015, 43% of teens reported sleeping less than seven hours a night on most nights, meaning almost half of US teens are significantly sleep deprived. What could have raised sleep deprivation among teens to such unprecedented levels? Some factors are easy to rule out. For example, it was found that the amount of time teens spent working, doing homework, and participating in extracurricular activities held steady during those years. However, there was one large change in teens' lives between 2012 and 2015, more owned smartphones. Sleep deprivation among teens today is said to be at epidemic proportions. It is said that some children are getting as little as 4.9 hours of sleep per night. And more and more teenagers have smartphones and most of them have no real use for them. Parents have abrogated their responsibility and so to keep up with the Kardashians have decided that their children must have it all without understanding that there are consequences. Teens have access to every social media platform, movies and games, none of which is of any real benefit to them, it's just something to do. We have seen that student performance has dipped in many areas. This could be directly linked to less sleep and more of an attention to being online into the late hours of the night. This is what being on cell phones or computers will do to us if we use them before bedtime. The blue light emitted by screens on cell phones, computers, tablets and televisions restrain the production of melatonin, the hormone that controls your sleep-wake cycle or circadian rhythm. 
Reducing melatonin makes it harder to fall asleep and stay asleep. Sleep deprivation will also lead to obesity, depression, elevated blood pressure, mood swings, and lower grades. So when a teenager is playing a violent video game regularly in his bedroom, his brain starts to see the room as an entertainment zone rather than a quiet sleep environment. Not to mention that the brain cannot calm down from that type of stimulation. Studies have found that losing just one hour of sleep can negatively affect school performance by impeding memory and making it more difficult for children to solve math problems. Teens and children have access to too many tools, so they do not have dark silence anymore, but rather more light all the time. Parents, if your children must have a phone, buy one that does not have internet access. You're not helping your child because you think they need to have all the goods on their phones. Most importantly, you must set the rules when it comes to the phone use either way. If you do not know what your child is doing on their phones, and if you are not in the position to control and monitor use, then they should not have one. That's Living Well for today. Tune in next time for Why Hasn't Anyone Looked at the Lead Connection? Fearless and Fear, Nationwide 90 FM. If you have a hectic schedule and barely get much sleep, I can imagine the bags under your eyes. Let's review a few things you can do. Hi, I'm Tana, and these are your lifestyle pages. Reduce your salt intake. Water will travel from the parts of your body that are low in sodium to the parts that have. The area around your eyes is a prime example. That's why a dinner loaded with salt will result in a morning after puffiness. Sleeping on your side or stomach, gravity will cause fluid to collect under your eyes. Try to sleep on your back and add an extra pillow under your head. Ladies, remove your eye makeup before snoozing. It can make your eyes water and cause a case of morning after puffiness. Still swollen? Try chilling them with slices of cucumber or tea bags. I'm Tana. Catch you next time. Nationwide 90 FM, continuing the tradition of fair, fearless, and factual reporting. From Negril Point to Morant Bay, a little kindness can go a far way. The time by the Jamaica Information Service is... News time, 7 o'clock. If you need to build it, plumb it, weld it, pave it, or power it, National Supply has it. Get the best brands for the job at Jamaica's Industrial Hardware Superstore, Kingston Normal Bay. The temperature by National Supply is... 27 degrees Celsius in Kingston, 26 degrees Celsius in Montego Bay. The most credible news in the morning. The news at 7 on Nationwide 90 FM. Coming up with the news this morning, Monday, April 15, 2024. Confusion in the diaspora. This as rival group shed groups schedule conference at same time and venue as recognized body. Concerns grow about the likely impact of a lack of water on elderly Jamaicans. And the Met Service says dry spell expected to last for the next three months. In international news, world leaders urge Israel not to retaliate after Iran attack. The details up next. If it's news, it's got to be Nationwide 90 FM. Now to the details. Tensions are high amid a dispute involving rival groups in the Jamaican diaspora and the Jamaican government. This as a faction within the diaspora registered itself using the same name as the pre-existing Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, GJDC. The GJDC is recognized by the Jamaican government. The new group, which has also been using a logo bearing a striking resemblance to that used by the GJDC, has been causing confusion among Jamaicans living overseas. The GJDC is set to host its 10th biennial conference in Montego Bay St. James from June 16 to 19 this year. But the new group, which includes the likes of Dr. Rupert Francis and former FBI Special Agent Wilfred Rattigan, have also advertised a conference for that same period and at the same venue. The new group has been sending correspondence to potential invitees, causing confusion about which diaspora conference and group is the one being backed by the Wholeness Administration. In a press statement last Friday, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed grave concern over the distribution of promotional material resembling the Ministry's official communication for the conference and threatened legal action against the group. The Ministry accused those responsible for the creation of the new group of deliberately sowing confusion 
confusion to mislead members of the diaspora. As people across the country continue to grapple with dry conditions across several parishes, there is growing concern about the impact of a lack of water on the elderly. The concern is being expressed by Executive Director of the Mona Aging and Wellness Center, Professor Denise Eldemeyer Scherer. A lot of older people have muscle problems, arthritis, and even just frailty, and they cannot carry containers for distances. In addition, bending can also be an issue, again, due to the arthritis, hip problems, back problems. So when family members put the water in a um, bucket in the bathroom, they can't bend to get it out to flush the toilet, and they can't bend to get it to bathe because you have to throw it over yourselves. Older people may use more water due to the aging changes, due to frequency of, of passing urine. If incontinent, they may need to bathe or wash more frequently, again using more water. The National Water Commission, NWC, says it could be forced to impose water lockoffs at night in the corporate area as both Mona Reservoir and Hermitage Dam are being adversely affected by the drought. There has been a steady decline in storage levels at the facilities in recent weeks. Professor Eldermeyer Scherer says the lack of water can also have a negative effect on the mental health of the elderly. There are studies, one that I read was from China, showing that not having adequate access to water actually causes mental health issues. And it's easy to see why, because if you're not able to wash yourself as regularly, you're losing a little urine. And remember, we have diabetics here who can lose urine because of high sugar. You're very sensitive of being having a smell, and therefore one can see the stress. The fact that you have to call somebody to flush the toilet for you when you want your independence, again, you can see the possibilities for stress. Therefore, we have to remember the mental health issues. Professor Denise Eldemeyer Shearer, Executive Director of the Mona Aging and Wellness Center. Principal Director of the Med Service, Evan Thompson, says the dry spell should continue to affect Western parishes over the next three months, even as above average rainfall is projected for the rest of the island. Looking at the outlook though, the rainfall outlook for April, May and June, we see that there is some improvement that is likely to occur. It probably will not set in immediately because we are in the month of April and as we see in this forecast here, or the outlook, it shows that the western part of the island will continue to experience quite a bit of dryness, even more so than the rest of the country. Others will gradually start to see the rainfall coming in and we expect it to become above normal, but this might happen more toward the end of this period. This is in May, in June, when we expect the secondary rainfall peak to occur. Mr. Thompson says Jamaica experienced below average rainfall in January and February this year after rainfall was higher than the norm in November and December last year. As we move to look back at October 2023, we see where the levels of rainfall, they were actually just over 80% of normal, which means that it was below what is usually expected for the rainfall season, which kind of sets us back. We normally expect um, a, a good amount of rainfall, an appreciable amount of rainfall in that rainfall season to take us right through the dry season. So we saw that we experienced about 80%. Then in November, it went up over 100%, yes. And December also, we had significantly above normal rainfall. But then we saw the dip occurring in January. And that is when the very dry conditions started to set in. Drought conditions were gradually being experienced moving into February. Evan Thompson, Principal Director, of the Med Service. Meanwhile, Managing Director of the Water Resources Authority, Peter Clark, says the country's rivers are also being affected by the lack of rainfall since the start of the year. He cited Plant and Garden River in St. Thomas as an example. Plant and Garden is the only major river on the island that does not flow in a northerly to southerly direction. There is a major concern because our rivers, which are largely rain-fed, and responding to the lack of rain, it shows that they are now down in terms of levels. What we've done, we've looked at some selected rivers with regards to their flows. So with regards to the Plant and Garden River, for last month, it, was, it had a flow of 102 million gallons per day. And in February right now, it has 24 million gallons per day. Last year, this time, it was 5.7 million gallons. So this, these drops are significant. 
Peter Clark, Managing Director of the Water Resources Authority. And amid these soaring temperatures and punishing heat, beverage manufacturer Wisinko says it has ramped up production to meet demand from consumers. That's according to its chairman, William Mafood. We just completed installing two new production lines, one for street beverages, carbonated beverages, and another water line, which are those who are finished and um, completed, the last one in, in end of February, early March. We are now able to meet the needs. Last year we had some challenges, but this year we will definitely have adequate supplies for the market because we do see growing demand with the heat that we're experiencing right now. At the same time, Mr. Mafood says while there is the possibility of price increases, they should not be excessive. You know, there have been some increases in areas of production, specifically in areas like labor. As the labor market tightens and as, um, as those inflationary pressures take, take everybody, including manufacturers and any, any industry basically, has those inflationary pressures. We may have to review prices, but we have not had and will not have any excessive price increases. I don't anticipate anything significant that is going to be a burden on consumers. William Mafood, the chairman of Wisinko. Kingston's Mayor Andrew Swaby has accused his deputy, Councillor Delroy Williams, of being unable to accept the fact that the opposition PNP is now in charge of the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, the KSAMC. Mayor Swaby made the argument in a recent statement to the media. He was reacting to concerns raised by Councillor Williams about the composition of committees in the KSAMC. Mahiri Stewart has that story. In a lengthy media release, Mayor Swaby accuses his deputy of disrespecting the office of the mayor, bypassing protocol, and disregarding formalities. Swaby says it appears Williams is having a hard time accepting that the People's National Party is now in charge of the municipal corporation. The Jamaica Labour Party lost control of the KSAMC following February's local government elections. While both parties won 20 of the 40 divisions up for grabs across the city and its suburbs, the PNP won the right to elect the mayor by virtue of its success in the popular vote. Both parties have failed to come to a consensus on the composition of committees in light of the even split of divisions. Mayor Swaby says he's unaware of any specific legal guidelines governing how to populate committees when there's an equal number of councillors in the council. He says Councillor Williams has presented a distorted view of efforts to name the committees. He says suggestions that his actions contravene legal or established norms are misleading. According to Mayor Swaby, the KSAMC has never faced a 2020 tie. He says Councillor Williams' assertions that the committee compositions do not reflect the electoral results of February 26 ignore what he says is the undeniable fact that the PNP controls the council. He says that reality should be recognized regardless of Williams' personal acceptance. Swaby says the suggestion that reducing the number of JLP councillors on a committee will reduce transparency is baseless and illogical. He says what undermined transparency and accountability was Williams' administration's failure to accept resolutions from the minority caucus, their refusal to answer questions from the group, and their outright avoidance of meetings to discuss or consider resolutions related to building and planning. Swaby describes Williams' approach as a distortion of the facts. He says this does not serve the public interest and fails to uphold transparency and accountability. Mahiri Stewart for Nationwide News. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the government's new startup housing program is designed to provide suitable living structures for young Jamaicans seeking to live and work in urban areas. The Prime Minister was speaking during a handing over ceremony for the new social housing program in the constituency of East Central St. Andrew last week. In communities like these, as, and as I look around the audience that is gathered, I see a lot of young people, and uh, they want something like this. What they want is they want structure. So they want to have proper access to their, their premises, and they want well-built premises, which is why we announced a plan that we're going to be building what is called the start-up homes. So this is for young people who they don't have a large household, 
they want to live in proximity to where they work, that they can use their NHD benefit and buy their startup house. The Prime Minister announced the housing, housing program during his contribution to the budget debate last month. 264 units currently under construction at Vineyard Town and Howard Avenue in St. Andrew will be sold under the program. He says the program will allow the beneficiaries to receive benefits if they choose to sell the unit back to the National Housing Trust. So it's a smaller solution, a one-bedroom, maybe a two-bedroom. Small solution. Usually it probably will be apartment-type housing, apartment-type dwelling. And we will have young people, we'll specify the age range uh, in their 20s and 30s, who would be able to use their NHD benefit and buy these startup units with a buyback clause that when their circumstances change, in your 20s and 30s, you're a, a bachelor or a bachelorette. And then who knows? Ten years, five years, eight years after, your circumstances change, and so you need another bedroom. So you could then sell back that unit to the NHD, and you would get your NHD benefit once again. Prime Minister Andrew Holness. Two scholarships have been announced in honor of the late professional communicator Marcia Erskine. Ms. Erskine's family announced the scholarship fund on Sunday at her funeral service held at the University Chapel on the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. Her daughter, Rochelle Marshall, says the scholarship will be offered through the American Foundation for the UWI. And to honor her legacy of love, community and mentorship, we as a family are endowing a 15 million Jamaica scholarship fund in her name with the American Foundation University of the West Indies. <laughs> The Master Erskine Scholarship Fund will help create and educate the next wave of women journalists at the University of the West Indies. So she will live on. And we invite you all to embark on this journey with us. In your programs, you'll find the information and link to the foundation's page. If you're so moved, we welcome you. Thank you. Rochelle Marshall, daughter of Marcia Erskine. Chairman of Children of Jamaica Outreach, Koja, Gary Williams, says the organization will also honor Ms. Erskine with a scholarship. To honor her work and legacy, Koja will be presenting the Master Erskine Scholarship in her honor. The first presentation will take place at her upcoming scholarship awards luncheon next month. Remember, mourn her not for too long, but for just forever that she was. Gary Williams, Chairman of Children of Jamaica Outreach. Marcia Erskine passed away on Wednesday, March 6, at the age of 67. She had an esteemed career lasting more than 30 years as a journalist and a public relations practitioner. She was the Managing Director of Public Relations Agency, Marcia Erskine and Associates Limited. She also served as the Communications Consultant for the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, the JHDA. Overseas now, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has welcomed the establishment of a transitional council in Haiti. The council is tasked with choosing new political leadership and setting up elections in the crisis-torn CARICOM state. Further afield, world leaders are urging Israel not to retaliate after Iran launched an attack involving hundreds of drones, ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. British Foreign Secretary David Cameron says the UK does not support a retaliatory strike, while French President Emmanuel Macron said Paris will try to convince Israel it must not respond by escalating. Meanwhile, the US President Joe Biden has warned Israel that the US will not participate in any retaliatory strikes on Iran. That's the news. Sign up for the JN Money Card. It's safe, convenient, and free. The time by JN Money is... 17 minutes past 7.
Employers, mark your calendars. The annual employer's return, SO2, originally due March 31, 2024, is now due on April 2, 2024. File online at jamaicatax.gov.jm. Contact 888 Tax Help for more assistance. The temperature by Tax Administration Jamaica, working together to serve you even better, is 27 degrees Celsius in both Kingston and Montego Bay. Street Smarts 2 is on tap with Ludlow McLean from the El Shaddai Taxi Company. Good morning, Ludlow. Good morning, morning, George. And uh, the listener, good morning. And uh, the, just to let you highlight what's happening, still, still quite active in the St. Catherine area. This time, if you're leaving like places like Old Arbor, you're on the Old Arbor Road. Various schemes are there now, and you're really going to find it challenging to get to that roundabout. And it's the same thing if you're on the St. John's Road. Those of you are coming from in the vicinity of the Dovecott area and all these different demands, new heights, and you're using Old Arbor Road, you're going to have traffic all the way to that uh, bypass. The bypass is already busy from this morning with traffic, and as a consequence, you're going to find Mandela quite busy on that Osimati roundabout all the way eastbound into towards Six Miles, which was already busy from this morning. And much of these areas are quite busy. Malines Road heading, heading into Alpha Tree, Reddy's Road heading across the east of Park Road, then Hunter Spring Road in that area heading towards, sorry, heading towards Alpha Tree Square. You're going to find that quite active indeed. Hope Pro was already busy with traffic at this point in time. And all of the other areas quite busy. If you're on East King's House Road, it's busy because guess what? Barbican Road has a lot of traffic, especially if you're coming from Grand Spring, Acadia Drive, Russell Light, and Bird Circle Lane. All these areas are busy. And much of Half a Tree Square and going further down Half a Tree Road into Cross Road, you're going to find bumper to bumper traffic. So it's a busy, busy Monday morning. And no doubt, traffic will continue. So it's our second report, and as usual, lane properly. We want to say good morning to all our listeners, all our transport operators. All the different executives in the transport sector. Yeah. At Street Smart. <laughs> Lord, Lord. I don't know what's happening. Gremlins on the line, but you can sort that out. You know, one of the big tips them when you get this morning. Yeah, thank you very much, Lord McLean. There, our friend from the El Shaddai Taxi Company with Street Smarts. Two up next the front page. Before you cut the line, though, Jermaine, I just want to tell the listeners that there is protest action taking place at Seaview Gardens Primary in Seaview Gardens, that's in the corporate area. And Sidere staff and some members of the community have joined them. They are protesting alleged irregularities at the institution. And they say these irregularities have caused the non-payment of salaries to Sidere staff. And so the Sidere staff, they've padlocked, padlocked the school gate so nobody can get in. And that's the situation at Seaview Gardens Primary. At this time, we're going to get some information. We're going to have something definitely uh, for the an update as the morning goes along and certainly for the next major newscast at midday. But up next, the front page. Front page is brought to you today by ABC Electrical Sales. For a better choice in the electrical business. For all your electrical needs, visit ABC Electrical Sales. They stock a wide variety of electrical supplies including plugs, switches, panel boards and conduits, plus energy saving fixtures. ABC Electrical Sales stocks brands like GE, Siemens, Philips, Cutler Hammer and Allen Bradley. They also offer free island-wide delivery just to suit your needs. Visit them at Shop 8, Hackley Park Plaza, Kingston 10, or call 876-754-3714-5 or 876-754-3825-8. APC Electrical Sales, for a better choice in the electrical business. Seven twenty-two. It's front page time here on Nationwide this morning. My name is George Davis, and I'm Tona Thomas. And just before we get into the front page, Tona, I'm taking liberties here. I want to send happy birthday greetings to Paris Warner. You can call Paris my niece. Beautiful 
the girl, very, very bright. The daughter of Neville Warner and Sabrina Cross Warner. Paris turns eight today. It's like I yesterday when I said Paris picture in the hospital, you know, just delivered. Yeah, Paris, eight years old. Happy birthday today. She attends Mona Prep and she's sitting in the car right now listening and she wouldn't have been pleased if she had gone out and didn't hear it. So happy birthday, Paris. Have a very, very good day today. All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, Paris. Turning our attention now to our discussion segment, the front page. Tensions are high amid a dispute involving rival groups in the Jamaica diaspora and the Jamaican government. This as a faction within the diaspora registered itself using the same name as the pre-existing Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, GJDC. The GJDC is recognized by the Jamaican government. The new group, which has also been using a logo bearing a striking resemblance that used by the GJDC has been causing confusion among Jamaicans living overseas. The GJDC is set to host its 10th biennial conference in Montego Bay, St. James from June 16 to 19 this year. But the new group, which includes the likes of Dr. Rupert Francis and former FBI Special Agent Wilfred Rattigan, have also advertised the conference for that same period and at the same venue. The new group has been sending correspondence to potential invitees, causing confusion about which diaspora conference and group is the one being backed by the Wholeness Administration. In a press statement last Friday, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed grave concern over the distribution of promotional material resembling the Ministry's official communication for the conference and threatened legal action against the group. The minister accused those responsible for the creation of the new group of deliberately sowing confusion to mislead members of the diaspora. We're now being joined by diaspora community leader Dr. Karen Dunkley and head of the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force, Rupert Francis. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, George. Good morning. Good morning to you and your listeners. Thank you so much for joining us here on Nationwide 90FM. Just to get some clarity before we go even further into the discussion, Mr. Francis, is it that you lead this new group that is planning to have this conference in Jamaica around the same time that the GJDC is having its conference in June? Uh, good morning to you and your listeners um, of Nationwide. Uh, but let me say this, that we are not um, planning to have the conference at the same time. They, um, we're having a conference uh, on that day, um, and, but the people who are trying to turn it around, they knew that we were planning to have a conference to review the conference in the day. That's what the conference is all about. And we're not a rival group of dissidents. We are, in fact, a bona fide diaspora group that has been formed now for years. Both of us have been formed for years. So it's not a rival group. And it's not like a couple of people like Funky Chicken. Go ahead. Yes. What's the name of this group? Well, it's, 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 we, we call it a call to action right now, but it's led by the group that I led, Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force, which was formed uh, over nearly eight years ago. In, at the behest uh, of the U.S. Ambassador and uh, the Ministry of National, uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, uh, because I served as an advisor to them for many years. So this Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, GJDC, that has been registered in Florida, steps are being taken to yes. register the same with the IRS. That's not the group that you're a part of now? Oh, well, yes, we, we own that now. Yes, we own that now because it was not registered for 20 years by the government of Jamaica and should not be because the government of Jamaica does not own the diaspora. They, you know, they're trying to operate and to control the diaspora. Well, they don't own the diaspora. But hold on, um, Dr. Francis. The GJDC, the forerunning organization mm -hmm. that is recognized yeah. on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs website, lists all of the yeah. members, all of the committees. You're saying that mm -hmm. you now own that name. Yes. Okay. Well, it was not registered. It was not registered. And I'm also saying that it's three Jamaicans who are running the diaspora organization, and that is against the rules of the United States. Which rules of the United States? Which which rule which, which rules which rules of the United States determine how many Jamaicans should run the diaspora group representing We're not Jamaicans? Jamaicans living in the U.S. can run it, but not Jamaicans in Jamaica. It's no, by far. Go look it up. No man, hold on, hold on, Doctor Francis. Yeah. Take time with you now. We're, we're trying to make sense of it. You're saying 
Yeah. That's no, three Jamaicans. I'm just trying to say this. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I should have said this before. It's not your fault. Uh, but let me say this. No, hold on, Dr. Frank. Hold on, hold on. You're going to get the chance to say, man. Hold on. Take your time. We have time. You're saying, you said, three Jamaicans, are, the, the, the diaspora group representing Jamaicans is being run by three Jamaicans against the, the rules of the United States. And I'm asking, which rules? The rules of FARA, Foreign Relations um, Act. You, you, you can't have um, a, a foreign government running an organization in Jamaica without, um, without permission. No, man, but you're seeing a foreign government running an organization in Jamaica. No, that's not the issue. You know, you in, said... In, uh, in the United States. Okay. Sorry, my apologies. In the United States. In the United States. My apologies. Um, but uh, can I say this to you in, in, in fairness? Yes, I can. Well, I mean, if, the, if, you, if you had a press release that attacked you personally, wouldn't you kind of have your backup part? Right, I'm going to kind of... You know, which which and, and which, which press release know. which press release did the ministry dispatch that had your name in it? Oh Lord, my name is Captain Hooper J. Francis. Yeah, man. So and I'm they saying said I have a brief. Mm -hmm. I'm asking which said, press release. I'm asking which press release from the Foreign Affairs Ministry named you and and what is what's the claim that was made against you in that release? The, name, the it was released on Friday, I think. With your name and in it. It, it said yes. And and yes. what did it say about you? But, it says that I'm disgruntled. It says that um, I'm, I'm aggrieved at the, of the, my treatment um, by them, and uh, you know, over the years or what have you. And they have evidence, and they um, they have they can prove it. So I'm saying you got to prove that one because I served them, served us the entire Jamaica for years, so nearly thirty years, right? And I and and it can be proven by anyone. And I noticed that you have another guest on, and they can tell us. And it's called the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention. And we offered free service. Free service. They also said that I wanted to start a consultancy and that I destroyed, destroyed the crime task force. Well, it's never been better than now. Hold the point and there, I Dr. Francis. Hold the point there. We're going to take the break. When we come back, we hear from Dr. Dunkley, Dr. Karen Dunkley, a diaspora community leader, as we try to organize all of what is being said here. Give up every illegal gun. Call the police at 119 or Crime Stop at 311. The time by the Ministry of National Security is 7.30. Does your bra light up your back? Do your shoulders hurt from carrying the weight of your breasts? These are signs of an ill-fitting bra. When was the last time you were fitted by a bra fit specialist? The bra experts at La Belle Femme will take care of you. Drop into the store at 53 Lady Musgrave Road, Tuesdays to Saturdays from 10 to 5, and you will see the difference. Or call 876-622-6091. Do you operate a business in the manufacturing or agro-processing industry? Sajikor Bank has a loan just for you. Sajikor Bank Manufacturing and Agro-Processing Loan. Borrow up to 50 million with up to 12 years to repay. Financing you can use to retool, expand, improve efficiencies, or gear up for export. Speak with a business banker today. Sajikor Bank, Manufacturing and Agro-Processing Loan. Just another way Sajikor Bank is taking care of business. Conditions apply. Welcome back to Nationwide this morning. We're having a conversation with head of the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention and Prevention Task Force, Rupert Francis, and a diaspora community leader, Dr. Karen Dunkley, about a developing story involving two different groups, the GJDC and another group that it's being reported plan to have parallel conference at the same time in june dr dunkley want to bring you in on the conversation what do you make of what has been presented over the weekend in relation to this developing story good morning again Tuana. good morning again george and to your listeners but what we make of this is, is certainly what i have communicated good morning captain francis to rupert 
And um, it, it really is simple. So first of all, I do not support a boycott of the conference. I've encouraged Captain Francis and uh, members of the team to really attend and certainly engage with the government of Jamaica on the multifaceted issues uh, that impact our country and to advance the nature's interests. And Rupert and I have had several conversations in full transparency about that. The piece that is important which I did state in the in my statement to the observer is that they're within their democratic rights to organize. And I don't see, by the way, with all due respect, their event as a parallel conference. It happened at a different time. I really see more as a commentary on the official conference, if you will. And I've also communicated that to Captain Francis. So it's almost like there's a conference and then what happens with Captain Francis and the team is that they will take a look and they will do certainly some engagement, some interaction around that. And Captain, you could tell me if I'm wrong or right, but I'm not describing your action as a part of conference. One of the things, Captain, I think this is a very good time because I've asked you that as well as other members of the team in understanding the different perspectives taking place right now in the diaspora. I'm getting up uh, just before you go on, Dr. Dunkley. Uh, Dr. Dunkley, yes. just before you go on, do you have us on speaker? I'm getting yes, a, a feedback and we want to hear clearly what you're saying. Oh, do you no, have us I on do speaker? I don't have you on speaker at all. Oh, I'm not coming through clearly? I'm getting a feedback. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Francis, do okay, you... Ask them to ring me right back. No, yes. no, no, no. Stay no, where you are. Line. Stay where you are. Uh, we're going to start that. I just okay, didn't okay. want the feedback in what you were saying. wanted to hear you clearly. But go ahead. Oh, my, my apologies for the feedback. Not on speaker. I was just saying to Captain Francis because Captain Francis has served uh, previously in the role that I had in the West. And I think this would be an opportunity. And I've asked Captain Francis just to really be clear, like, what would be some of the specific ask around the new organization that they have formed with regards to diaspora engagement, especially as we are entering the 10th biannual conference. So I'd be interested in Captain Francis to share the top three issues that we need to bring to the fore so that we can have a meeting of the minds to move the nation forward. And uh, Mr. Francis, why not why why not that approach that Dr. Dunkley? But I told I told you I told you we had we we're not having a um, pilot conference that we're doing it in the evening. Um, you may have misunderstood me, my love. But the fact of the matter Tonna, is that Tonna is the name. Um, that's what a big pardon. Tonna is the name. Tonna, Tonna. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Um, you know I, that's what I said. Um, we're going to have it in the evening. And um, and and we that's and we're going to review as Dr. Dunkley said what happened in the day and not and introduce some solutions um, that we think are appropriate at this time. Now, just when to understand it as well, Mr. Francis, there's this view that there's the G D G J D C right, and then there's this mm -hmm. other group that your faction is trying to register. That would push out the original group that has been established they over have the years. Registered, they the have registered it, Ms. Tana. They have registered it, Tana. And Captain Francis, you can and should clarify that. The group is, in fact... Yeah, no, no, I, to, I told, I told Tana, um, Tana initially that I did. In addition to it, we're not a faction, Tana, please. Um, not a faction. We are a bona fide representative of the diaspora. And we have thousands of um, supporters. But don't you have? But don't you? But didn't you say that you have the same name as this original group, the GJDC? No, we did not say that. Okay. We said we're called to action. Called to action. What we did was we registered the name of the global diaspora, um, diaspora because it does not was not registered. So you do have the and same name as the GJDC, that, right? So you do have the same name as the G GJDC, um, Captain no, Francis. No, we have start. We, we, no, no. Listen, let's yes. clarify. Yes, we registered the name, and we will be operating going forward, possibly under that name. Yes, but we have registered. So you have the name. So you have the name. That's not an issue. So we'll, we'll move past that. We do have the name. 
name of the GJDC. Do- yeah, he, he yes, does. That that's settled. Doctor Dunkley. Doctor Dunkley. There's no equi- yeah, There's yeah, no yeah. equivocation about that. That's a fact. So hold on, hold on. Let's get some order. Firstly, Doctor Francis, you said before the break yeah. that the statement from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that you were attacked personally, yeah. you were named, and things were said about you. I'm looking at that statement yeah. on my phone. I don't see your name in the statement. And I don't see any reference that you could take on personally. But your name has not been called, and that's not what you told me before the break. So which statement did you see with your name in it? Just a minute, sir. I'm reading from a press release now. The ministry is aware of the personal grievances openly expressed by Captain Rupert Francis, and that's me. Hold on. Let let me go to the same statement. Let me go to the same statement. And I'm looking, which sentence, which, 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 we're in that, are, are you seeing that? We're, 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 we're in the statement. In the, 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 the fourth statement. The fourth statement. The what? Yes. No, no, which so. section of the, the statement? Third paragraph. I think, um, George, that Captain is, I don't know, Captain, if there is a statement, I sent something to Sonia, a statement that is reported to come from ministry. I'm wondering if that's the statement that Captain is referring right, to. Right, because I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking at the official statement from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade to Port Royal Street, and it does not name Captain Francis in the statement at all. No, 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 no. Well, unless they changed it. Hold on a second. Let me, let me get, um, let me get, let me go and look at mine. But, but, but I got the press release that I got. Hold on. Um, all right. So if you, all right. Hold on. Uh, while you do that, while you do that, let me ask you this, though. Let me ask you this. Here we have a situation where you have the name that the GJDC was working under. You've registered that name. You say going forward, you will be doing business under that name. You say that you're having a conference on the same day, the opening day of the GJDC conference. You are having a conference on that same day. But you're saying that that conference that you are having is to review what the GJDC would have done earlier. Am I correct? That's correct, yes. All right. So, are you, are you in your communication? In your communication, you're not telling people not to go to the original GJDC conference. But you're telling them to... Go ahead. Come to listen to us in the evening. Oh, so you're saying you're saying go there, but come to us in the evening. Yes. You're not saying don't go there. I never said that. No, man. I'm asking you straight up. now. are you telling them to not go there, or are you encouraging to or encouraging them to go there? I am saying, if you wish to go there, you can go there. It's up to you. Doctor Dunk, Doctor Dunk, to put three important questions on the table, which simply, which amounts to what I'm in, in, interested in hearing. What is it that you want, Doctor Francis, on behalf of the diasporans that you represent, that you think this is the best way to get those things accomplished? What are the What are the things you want? The be- The best way mm-hmm. is to first of all, we would, would have thought when I listened to the opening statements at the conference. I felt that they were not planning to discuss any of the issues and the grievances that we have or in the country or in the diaspora. And we have sent them, if you, I don't know if you're aware, an email some time ago to Audra Mark indicating the major issues that we're having with um, what's happening in Jamaica. Give us three of those you major issues. Just give us three of the major the issues. The major man. issue, the first one was the, 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 the murder, the rate of murder in Jamaica. Yes. The second one was corruption. The third one was failed promises that they made to the Jamaican diaspora. And you can go on, and I All have right. to write that. No, man, I just, said, I just said three. Fine. So those are the three big ones. On the third point, yes. what promise has not been kept? They have promised to engage with us and uh, to work with us towards a better um, diaspora and Jamaica. And they have not. And, and by engaging with you and working with you, you, you expected them to be meeting with you, to be putting you on committees, and they've not done that? Working with us, whatever way it is you want to express it, working with us. Remember, I worked with them for free for quite some years, too. And we, I also offered services to the Jamaica Dad for Crime Intervention and, and Prevention Task Force for free, too. The, and everything we did, we did on our own free BS. Yes. The council that is on the website of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, several portfolios, yeah. several persons. Did you seek election yeah. to that council? Well, I had given, I had completed my my reign um, at that time, and then it became, and then Karen 
um, and her uh, and other associates came and they, they, they were elected. Yeah, I, I was finished. I'd done my, my course. So there's no committee that you could have served on? Well, if, no, I'm saying we offered them service to reduce the violence, the crime and violence in Jamaica, and it was rebuffed publicly. No, man. Hold on, hold, on, hold on, Dr. Francis. I'm saying you say you served and that and you said yeah. your tenure was up so you you were no longer a part of this new council so is it that you yeah. said well look i w- i don't want to be a committee member to be a lowly member i want to be able to lead something and in leading it i want the government to engage me as a leader and not as a community member uh, as that as a committee member is that your approach to the to the discussions Yes, and we had we had such an organization, and we had such an agreement. So, yes. so, 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 unless you were leading, you didn't feel that you were in a position to make a contribution. What do you mean by leading? What? What? About, what Hold does that on, mean? except my organization. No man, listen to me again. You said that this Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, as it is constituted, that you have done your time. You are not a part of it. You didn't want to be a member yes. of any committee. That's what you said. So I'm saying. And I didn't want to be. And I didn't want to be leading it either. No, man. You didn't. So this, this, this organization that you now have, you are the leader of it, aren't yes. you? That's correct. Right. So I'm saying you believe that as a leader, you can make more impact than being, being just a mere committee member of something that existed before, correct? M- my friend, let me explain something to you. Yes. I am a retired army um, officer. Your credentials are not being Chris, are not on trial, Dr. Francis. Your, your, your bona fides and your antecedents are not on trial. We're talking about what you're intending to do now. But when you're asking me if I want to be a leader... Right. I'm asking Captain Francis, why don't you share... Uh, so from a crime perspective, because we know that that has been an ongoing issue, and we have, let's just say first of all that the government singularly is not responsible for crime. Let us all own improving, addressing crime as a community, uh, local, and a national issue for all Jamaicans. Tell us right now two actions coming out of what you're planning or two actions that you're advocating for so that we can work together on them george i please forgive me just for interrupting but i just want clarity here because i think once we are clear and we can articulate and define then we can get to the end in mind so captain give us one one thing let, let we see, need to do that diaspora engagement we, uh, would be helpful for offered, that the government should pull offered, us into as we are going into conference and coming out of conference. All right. We offer to assist them and especially the police with uh, um, addressing the issues of crime and violence. One of those issues is gang violence. We spoke about it. We wrote about it. And we agreed about it. That was one issue. We talked about corrections. We talked about, um, you know, the morale of the troops. I myself uh, addressed the troops, uh, the, the police down in, in Jamaica as well. We, so we were working with Jamaica, and we had a gang idea how to reduce the gangs, the 300 gangs in Jamaica. We have that. We wrote it, and it was agreed in Jamaica. And I am not alone. I have a group of leaders with me and persons who have a lot of experience. How many police personally did you meet with, Dr. Francis? I met with um, doc, um, the Minister Montague. No, but you said met, you met with the police. Staff, you, met, you met with the police. And the police, the chief, of, the chief of the police at the time, um, he, uh, I can't remember his name, no, he has a, I just don't remember his name, but he was the, he was the head of the police force at the time. Yeah. You mean Commissioner, Commissioner, not, 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 not Anderson? No, 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 it's before Anderson. Dr. Carl Williams? Um, it was Rocky, eh? Dr. Carl Williams? Not Dr. Carl. The no, no, no. You're talking about head of the JDF or the JCF. Which one? The JDF? The JCF and the JDF. Right. right. So I'm asking you who was the, co- the, the commissioner. You, you say you met with the... No, no, no. Hold on, no, man. You say you met with the police. To, to meet with the police. The High police command. commissioner, yes. You met with the police commissioner, the, the head of the JDF. The one because of the incident on the airport. That one. The one that was let go because of the incident at the airport? Yes. We had a commissioner that was let go because of an incident at an airport? You don't know his name? I don't remember his name. No, no I, 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 know, I don't know any commissioner in Jamaica that was let go because of an incident at an airport. Do you remember when the... Anyway, let me not... No, no, that, right. That is irrelevant. No, but what I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to establish the, who you met with. You said you met with the troops. You met with the police. Now you're saying that you I'm met... Not, 
I did not say, my friend, I did not say we met with the troops. We you said, met you said with troop. the head of the police. Yes. The head of the part, the, the um, head of the, um, the ministry, um, Mr. Montague. At the time, yes. We met with the permanent secretary. Yes. In their office. Yes. Yes. And you shared some plans, right? And we shared plans, yes, of course. And those plans have not been implemented? Some were implemented, some were not. Right, and the problem you have is what now? I am not having a problem except that cr crime has risen out of control and it could have been averted and many people in Jamaica would not have died. If the plan had right? been implemented as you had presented it? Absolutely. Oh, I see. Yes. I see. And I have yeah, George, I, I have just want to report. say to Captain Francis, Captain, with all due respect, and um, you and I, because... George and Tawana, Captain and I, we speak around these issues um, a lot. Is So it, it's not dependent on a personality, whether or not Captain submitted plans and the plans were not accepted. There are many things I suggest to government. What we seek to address, we seek to develop, is a global response, right? That is not personal to any of us on the issue, but it's more global with Jamaica. And Captain, I'm certainly not suggesting that this is personal to you, but the anecdotal... Um, what we intend and what we suggest, and if they're not accepted, and therefore this is where we are. And I think what would be um, compelling to share with the audience is, for us, these would be the three solutions to crime that we would like to engage the government around, i.e. community policing, here's what it would look like, this is what we would need, i.e. Um, early intervention, here's what it would look like, i.e. talk a little bit about the crime task force and what the original intent is and was and how you have thought to whether it's resource intellectual and thought partnering and intelligence. I think that that is where we need to lift the conversation as we think about ensuring that Jamaica enters this new century. We are post-pandemic. We're almost a year and a half outside the pandemic. And we can no longer think about these issues in the ways that we have thought about them. I know that Jamaica has much work to do in terms of engagement of her diaspora. But we as Jamaicans, we remain committed. And what we hope does not get translated here is that this is about any personal pieces to any of us, because there's a lot that we could say around many of the issues, myself included, around youth e development. Excellent, and excellent and intervention, Dr. We need global solutions. Ex excellent global intervention, Dr. Dunkley. I, I ask you, you are going to which conference on June 16? I will. <laughs> So I hope if I'm, I'm in Jamaica the week before, for, uh, I'm getting an award, thank you to the Jamaica Agriculture Society. And if I can stay, if work allows, I'm absolutely attending the conference in Montego Bay. I look forward and listen, I support... Woodward which one? Tonight. Which one? There are going to be two conferences, Dr. Dunkley. Which one are you attending? I will... Oh, Attend. There's only one conference. The one conference that is taking place is the 10th biannual in Montego Bay. That is the only conference that I know that is happening. Doctor, Doctor, Doctor Francis, will I see you there at the 10th biennial conference in the morning? No, you will not see me at the conference in the day. Um, uh, I will be on on the conference at Zoom at night in the evening. But let me also say before you, you seem to wrap want to wrap up. If you look on the press release that I have in front of me, the fourth paragraph. You will see the assault on my integrity. I got a and new, I got a new started. document, right? So that document mentions, yes, it does mention Captain Francis in in the thing. I got a, I was reading, I was, I was reading a different press release. It says, let me tell the listeners what it says. I, well, let me tell, let me help, let me help them now. Let me help. Them. It says, Captain Rupert Francis, to change the agreed mandate of the organization from a task force to a crime prevention consultancy group, this organization lost most of its membership and credibility. It also no longer performed its agreed functions and therefore ceased to be associated with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The ministry is aware of the personal grievances openly expressed by Captain Rupert Francis and associates of his. It's also aware of purported plans to protest against crime and corruption. This despite the best scores issued by Transparency International having been received by the current government. And, uh, yeah, so you're saying you're taking issue with what they've said about you and your associates. I'm taking issue because it's scurrilous the way they have dealt with the issue. Yes. Because, as far as I'm concerned, that is, that is unfair and unjust. And that's what I'm so, we're talking about. And we have to, have to understand that we cannot behave in this manner. 
with people who have served our country and continue to serve our country. Do you so think your actions? Do you think your actions have caused disunity and uh, confusion within the diaspora and for us Jamaicans looking on from home? Absolutely not. I do not believe it has caused any confusion. What has been caused is the refusal of government to to work with the diaspora to get a better re re resolution. That is what is happening. No confusion. And it was deliberate. It is deliberate to, 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 de to demonize certain people within the diaspora. And I am one of them. So that is that. not right. Thank you this Captain, morning. what would you say to people who have asked, George, just, I know, just one quick question. What would you say to individuals who have asked, why register the name of the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council? What, what is your response to that? My response to that is that the Global Diaspora, it was there. It, is not been, it does not own by anybody. And so, therefore, we sought to, um, we sought to own it. And we have. Yeah, but we know that Nobody the owns diaspora it. isn't owned by anyone. We understand that the diaspora is a movement and it's comprised of people exactly. who are Jamaicans who live outside of Jamaica. What I'm asking specifically and based on feedback is why would there be an action to register? The ministry has formed this council emerging out of the Jamaica Diaspora Advisory Board, which you serve. I was one of the founding members of the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council. And I think what we're seeking to clarify, to understand, seeking to understand, is why register that name, the name developed from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Well, the, the, I th the only reason would be to, to make sure that um, the diaspora is, uh, as it was supposed to be, is an entity in itself. The diaspora is an entity, and the <laughs> diaspora cannot be run by a non-diaspora organization, which is the government of Jamaica. Do you have political, actually. Dr. Francis, do you have political ambitions here at home in Jamaica? Let me say this to you. I was in politics for many, many years before, and I don't necessarily believe that I should be in politics now. Okay. Um, but, uh, yes, I've, I've been in politics. But my moves are not political, no? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then the move to register this GJDC with the IRS to then invalidate the claims of those who are now serving that organization, you don't see that as potentially damaging to the diaspora movement in the United States? No, especially. it's not damaging. Okay. No, it's not damaging at all. It is saying that we as a diaspora want to run the, the diaspora ourselves mm -hmm. as a group. Here you are that. that. We, we have to go. We have to go. Dr. Dunkley, okay. thank you this morning for your, for your contribution. Oh. And thank Dr. You Francis, thank, thank, you thank, you thank you very much, Captain. All thank the best. Thank you. Take care. All right. All the best. All the best. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Listen up motorists, speeding burns more gas. So slow down, the life you save may be your own and also that of your loved ones. Slow down, save lives and money. The time by the Insurance Association of Jamaica is 7.55. At Hawkeye, our mission is to deliver cutting-edge security solutions to help you keep track of the things you value most. The temperature by Hawkeye is... 27 degrees Celsius in both Kingston and Montego Bay. For all your electrical needs, visit ABC Electrical Sales. They stock a wide variety of electrical supplies including plugs, switches, panel boards and conduits, plus energy-saving fixtures. ABC Electrical Sales stocks brands like GE, Siemens, Philips, Cutler Hammer and Allen Bradley. They also offer free island-wide delivery just to suit your needs. Visit them at Shop 8, Hackley Park Plaza, Kingston 10 or call 876-754-3714-5 or 876-754-3825-8. APC Electrical Sales, for a better choice in the electrical business. When it happened again, people keep coming up to me big enough flow Yard and Road. One lady stopped me in the supermarket to say she loves Yard and Road because she gets both internet and mobile in one plan and how much money she saves. Then I saw this guy who told me that the internet speed is super fast. Guy? What guy? No, and his girlfriend. She's a blogger, so she uses the unlimited social media when she's on the road. I knew they would love it. Told you so. No, I told you so. No, I told you so. Get Flow Yard and Road, the one for all today. Visit discoverflow.co or a flow store for more information. More savings, more choices. Get at 
active with Active Home Center The one stop shop for everything for your home We have more savings, more choices, unbelievable prices White selection with the latest styles The kitchen bathroom right down to the top Buy the hottest items on spot, don't miss out Best options on the one roof, no doubt More savings, more choices and Visit us in store or online at www.activehomecenter.com We have more savings, more choices Welcome back to Nationwide this morning. Well, you listened and you can make of it what you will. What I made of it, George, um, Mr. Francis plans to have some sort of review in the afternoon of a conference that he just told us that he's not attending. Yeah, that's one. He's also going around this issue of, no, I'm not, I have not registered another um, counselor or, or, or unit in the name of the GJDC. But that is essentially what has happened. Yeah, that's two. And three, I think all of this could <laughs> have done with a conversation with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. And four, I don't know, Mr. Francis seems to be <laughs> on a frolic or seems to have this, you know, God Almighty sort of uh, a perspe perspective on things. Because as you heard in the conversation, he said, if they had implemented what I had suggested, yeah, man, crime would have been reduced and minimized. You would not have had what you have now. Mm -hmm. And many people would not have died. Many people would not have died. Yeah. <laughs> it's a responsibility of a government, of units, organizations that have been set in train a long time ago with leadership, good leadership, to hear suggestions from many different people who have their suggestions and their perspectives. And then it is for you to look at all of the suggestions that have been placed on the table and then to implement what you think is properly operationalized in the best interest of the people. And that has been what is taking place. Remember, you know, he said they have implemented some of the things that he had suggested, but they did not implement some. He wanted them to implement all, you know, and that cannot be the case when people are looking at things that have been suggested, um, whether it be to fight crime or whatever else in the country. His response to the question about whether or not all of what is happening, the parallel groups, if there's confusion and disunity, he says no. I find that um, troubling. Yeah. If, if, if that doesn't appear to be confusion and disunity, then I don't know what confusion and disunity is, but I, I, I endorse the comments you say. You, you made just now wholeheartedly. You are spot on. It's 8 o'clock. Time for Cross Jamaica. Yep, 8 o'clock. Across Jamaica comes up now. Front page was brought to you today by ABC Electrical Sales for a better choice in the electrical business. Clearing personal non-commercial shipments at the port? Avoid the wait. Request a contactless clearance through your agent today. It's more efficient. It's secure. The time by the Jamaica Customs Agency is 8 o'clock. From the mountainside to seaside, countryside to townside, inside and outside, it's Across Jamaica This Morning. And Across Jamaica This Monday Morning, a 22-year-old man was shot and killed in a twist of fate in Irwin St. James on Sunday evening. The police report that the deceased, Brandon Campbell, had traveled to Pega Road, where he attacked and shot another man. A licensed firearm holder who witnessed the incident responded by opening fire at Campbell. Both men were transported to hospital where Campbell was pronounced dead. Police say the man who was the target of Campbell's attack is in stable condition. A man believed to be of unsound mind is among the latest casualties on the nation's roads. The man, Keith James, otherwise called Bam, 
was mowed down by a white Nissan AD wagon on the Houghton Grove Main Road in Hanover Sunday night. The police say the motor car was traveling towards Mintiga Bay and was negotiating a corner when it slammed into James. James sustained multiple injuries and was pronounced dead at hospital. Police say the driver of the motor car has not yet been arrested, but has been warned of prosecution pending their investigation. The St. Catherine North Police say it seized a total of 19 9mm and 612 gauge cartridges in an operation on Manchester Street in Spanish Town, St. Catherine on Saturday. The police say the ammunition was found in plastic bags in a bathroom on a premises. Ammunition fines were also reported in the Kingston Eastern Division, where the police say they seized 24 assorted rounds of ammunition in the Burger Gully community of Mountain View, Kingston 2 on Saturday. The ammunition included the three 5.56 mm rounds, 2.38 special rounds, and 19 45 millimeter rounds. 32 year old Kareem Cunningham, otherwise called Brother, a security guard of Hatfield Road, Portmore St. Catherine, was charged with embezzlement following an incident that occurred on Main Street, Mandeville, Manchester, on Tuesday, November 28 last year. Reports indicate that about 11 30 a.m., Cunningham received the sum of $227,652 from a customer, which was intended to be deposited into a company vault. However, he allegedly stole $100,000 for personal use and only deposited $127,652 into the vault. Cunningham did not return to work thereafter. On Friday, April 4, 2024, Cunningham was apprehended by police in Portmore St. Catherine, and during an interview with the police, he provided a caution statement admitting to the crime. Subsequently, he was formally charged and is scheduled to appear before the Mandeville Parish Court on Wednesday, April 17. Finally, in across Jamaica this Monday morning, the St. Catherine South Police have charged a man with larceny as a servant and access to computer device with intent to commit or facilitate the commission of an offense stemming from an incident at a business establishment in Portmore St. Catherine between February 2023 and January 2024. Charged is 32-year-old Corey Carter, supervisor of 4 West Portmore St. Catherine. Reports are that Carter, who is employed or who was employed as a cashier, used an authorized code to operate a phone card machine, sold a quantity of phone cards, purchased gift items as well, valued at $212,520 from the phone card machine, and converted it to his use and benefit. A report was made and an investigation was launched, which led to Carter being arrested and charged. That's it for Across Jamaica for this Monday morning. I'm Tona Thomas. The National Solid Waste Management Authority's mobile application was launched on June 5, 2020 to facilitate digital reports of littering in public spaces and illegal dumping. Since then, there have been more than 2,000 app downloads and more than 1,500 reports. Mikhail Graham, a teacher by profession, shares his experience with the app. I believe that majority of individuals can use it regardless of age or limited knowledge of internet or technology. It was quite easy to navigate as you had the different options for you to fill in your name, email address number and a part for you to include what the status was like and out of 10 generally it would be like a 9 out of 10 in terms of user friendly. You can download the NSWMA app by visiting the Google Play Store or the iOS Apple Store and typing in NSWMA. SWMA, a message brought to you by the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development. More savings, more choices. Get active with Active Home Center. The one stop shop for everything for your home. We have more savings, more choices, unbelievable prices. White selection with the latest styles. The kitchen, bathroom, right down to the top. Buy the hottest items on spot, don't miss out. As options on the one roof, no doubt. Savings, more choices. Visit us in store or online at www.activehomecenter.com. We have more savings, more choices. Jumpstart your fitness goals with Express Fitness. Express Fitness.
Sign up today and restart your fitness journey at an express fitness location near you. Enjoy safe, comfortable, and well-equipped gyms from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily. Call 554-5180 for a full listing of our open locations. Express Fitness. Express Fitness. Your goal. Our mission. The Premier Real Estate Conference and Expo returns to Jamaica at the Pegasus Hotel from April 14 to 16. Cliff Hughes Online will broadcast live from the Expo on Monday, April 15. Tune in as local and international speakers address affordable housing solutions, wealth creation through ownership and legal roadmap development. That's a live broadcast of the Premier Real Estate Conference and Expo during Cliff Hughes Online, Monday, April 15 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Only on Nationwide 90 FM, the new revolution in media. This broadcast is brought to you by Dynamic Events, Conrad Douglas & Associates, Millennium Properties Sales & Service Limited, and Stewart's Hardware. Eight minutes past eight o'clock this morning, and we are talking now to the Ministry of Well, the Minister of Labor and Social Security, Pernell Charles Jr., because that ministry is undertaking strategic initiatives to overhaul the Overseas Employment Program. We refer to it commonly as the Farmer Program. Um, the Overhaul will seek to improve worker selection, expand opportunities for candidates, strengthen relations with employers and enhance the orientation and onboarding process. Recently, a farmer orientation session was conducted for elected officials and constituency representatives to inform them about the upgraded program, including new selection criteria, guidance on the selection process, and addressing concerns about candidate competitiveness in the labor market. The minister joins us this morning. Good morning, Minister Charles. Morning to you. Morning, George. And morning to all of your listeners. Farewell. The, the, the first and perhaps most important question is, what will this overhaul do for the high, perhaps disproportionately high number of Jamaicans who run off on the farm work program? I mean, let me tell you, the goal firstly is for us to respect the importance of the program by making sure that we make an investment in how we're running the program. Um. We, we have a high number of, of AWOL, which are persons running off, um, but that's coming from, uh, you know, perhaps the, the process uh, being efficient in terms of how we're identifying persons and orienting them. Um, and so if we improve on that process from the start, the hope is that we'll be able to get a better outcome. Um, so by having this overhaul or transformation in how we are selecting, in how we are orienting, in how we are informing persons, um, then we hope that we will have not just less persons running off, but that we have greater efficiency, greater attitudes in the workplace, um, and ultimately a program that can, can grow, a program that can be sustained, a program that can be dynamic and can continue to contribute to the lives of the many hundreds of thousands of individuals and families and communities that benefit from this. You're talking about 10,000 Jamaicans in Canada alone. Mm -hmm. More than being a national embarrassment, the obvious difficulties that it presents for the ministry to get more people to work on the program, that's obvious. But I'm suggesting that the ministry perhaps does not need to break new ground to... Uh, stem the tide of AWOL farm workers because there are several countries who provide seasonal workers to places like Canada whose AWOL numbers are in the single digits and, and we are so high. So what, what, which country or which set of countries could you look to 
for the formula to keep the workers in the program? Well, well let me tell you this. The, the reason why somebody would go AWOL can be varying. Um, it could be just a matter of what they have been taught, what they have, what they have heard. Um, it can be a matter of just the system here and, and, and how they view it and their perspective on what is better for them and trying to find it out. I mean, not everybody who goes AWOL is bad. Sometimes people are just looking for a better option. And sometimes people go AWOL and then call back and say, but this, this is not a better option. You know, so the, what we're trying to do is to expose persons to the reality from the start so that they understand that a lot of the stories they've heard that, um, you know, once you go up, it's this, it's this, it's just honey and gold. It's not true. Um, and so that we can put in place a system that allows them to see this, uh, this process of taking the months, doing good work, coming back home, finding something else to do here to contribute to the agricultural sector in Jamaica or mm. to whatever sector, um, to see that as, as a more comprehensive, realistic, safe, and sustainable option. It's the system, though, Minister, that, that, that I'm keen on, because I did ask if it is that there can be lessons learned from the other countries that do not have the problem that we have with people running off but when the they go to Canada. Is, you know, they, all the countries are having it. Yeah, man, but but uh, some but we 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 are we are we are we are you know who Jamaicans are and everything. If we're the best, we're the best. If we're the worst, we're the worst. We are worse than everybody else. Let me tell you what we have found when we analyze it um, is that one a lot of the persons who and it's not let me let me stop and say this. A wall is only one issue, and it's not the primary reason why we are doing the overhaul, but it is one element. Um, however. What we have found and we analyze and we, we determine what are the best next steps is that the, the, the candidate that comes to us um, needs to be better informed of what they're going to do. So, for instance, if you're a taxi man driving in Jamaica or a security guard, um, the kind of work that you're used to in Jamaica, if you go on farm work, you have to ready your mind, you have to adjust it to know that you're going into a different category of work. While if you're a farmer in Jamaica who is doing work every day, every morning, you get about four o'clock to carry out your boat or you go and plow your field, you know, you're transitioning into something that, that you're used to. But we have to firstly ensure that these young men and women are oriented properly. Secondly, well, firstly, before that, we need to identify the right persons. Um, and identifying the right persons means not just looking on your physical state or competence, but your attitude. And why do I say that? When we look on the, the opportunities for expanding the program, they, they, they literally rest in the hands of the employer. If the employer wants more persons from Jamaica, then we will get more options and opportunities for Jamaicans. And so when you ask the employer what they think, they would tell you Jamaicans are great. They can do the work. But if you have a hundred, you might have two or three whose attitude impacts negatively the rest of the ninety-six or ninety-seven others. And, and so that's one of the things that we're looking on because that is also connected to the conduct in terms of a war. The attitude of the person is perhaps standing out now as critical. And how do you look on that? You look on attitude by moving beyond just do you have a radar ID moving beyond just do you have no criminal record, to, to getting into the kind of questions that expose how that person would treat with an uh, issue of confrontation, how that person would deal with specific types of issues, uh, of, of circumstances. So you can either identify um, or give the person the support and the training and the guidance to know how to treat with these matters. And what has been expressed? What has been expressed by the the employers in relation to this matter of the farm workers coming over there and running off? So the How big of an issue is it? It impacts them significantly. Let me tell you why. Because I mean, if you plan to get ten persons to come and work during X months or X weeks, and when you, when they come up after you have paid for them to come up, you you six run off. Your business your business itself suffers. But you also suffer because you now have to go and restart a process 
to identify other persons. You have a shortage in your ear, so it's not like you can just pick up and say, listen, let me go out to the street and get them. So it impacts them negatively because they are tied to contracts. Most of these employers are farmers. Um, they work on contracts. So if they don't get the amount of persons that they have asked for, they can't get the output that they need to, to, to be able to um, to satisfy the contractual agreements that they have. So they're impacted along the chain of their business. All right? um, and another thing that we found is some other persons, not just from Jamaica, who are going up, but not going up to work, going up with the intention of manipulating the system, they end up lying on employers. So, so they know how to use the system for themselves. They make up stories. The employer gets investigated, and during that period of investigation, even though afterwards they are found to be innocent, that period of investigation is, is stagnant. They can't bring in anybody, um, so they've lost six months of work. Uh, so, so, there, so these are several of the issues that are impacting employers negatively. Now, ultimately, the problem for us is when an employer is impacted that negatively and it is connected to even one Jamaica. That person gets up and says to himself, I don't want nobody else from that place. Mm-hmm. And so you find that you may lose 500 um, positions because th- there's no one employer that doesn't know another farmer or another farmer or another farmer. And he's going to spread that message. So we have found, at least I have found, that it is important for me as minister to go up and build relations. That's why you see me having this heavy focus on attitude, heavy focus on on my liaison service being optimal, heavy focus on going up, sitting down, eating, talking, meeting, discussing, ventilating issues with the farmers so that they know that if you have 100 persons and you have one or two bad in the bunch, uh, we're going to do everything we can on our part as a government to make sure that we facilitate and support treating with those issues so it doesn't impact the, the, the 100 or 200 that are coming. Who would want that opportunity and who would do very well? No, Minister, the, the training and, and the assessments and all of that that is expected to go into um, the, the farm work program now to ensure that you have fewer people running off, fewer negative impacts on the program overseas. When is that set to get underway? Um, already started. So we've already started to have um, the, the training, and it starts with the members of parliament, the councillors, the community leaders who are selecting. Um, we had a session in January with the MPs. We had two online sessions last week, mm-hmm. um, and I am also going around the country and meeting with farmers, farm workers. Um, I did a, I did a farm work session this last week as well. So, so that has already started, uh, where we are talking to them directly. Um, just bringing them up to speed on, on what's critical in terms of, of how we want them to start thinking, expressing to them that we're going to be doing, um, we have an agreement with HART so that those farm workers who go up and who, uh, or who want to go up or who may need some training or some additional training, we can assist them. And we also want persons who, do, who get a card and do not get selected to not feel rejected. Right, so it's a no one left behind policy. So if you get a card and you don't make it through, we still want you to come to us and for us to give you an opportunity to get some training and, and contribute to Jamaica. Right, so it's not always it's not all about um, taking a farm worker and sending them to Canada to the US. We want the farm workers who go up to know that when they come home, there's a space for you to contribute to agriculture in Jamaica. And we want those persons who don't get um, selected to know that if you're staying in Jamaica, we want to help you, to build you up, to strengthen you, to support you, so you can contribute to, to Jamaica. So so these are the things, and we started those processes already. Colonel Charles Jr., the Minister of Labor and Social Security, thank you so much for your time. All the best. Going to take a break. After the break, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs will be joining us to provide a response to that discussion that we had on the front page. Jump 
Start your fitness goals with Express Fitness. Sign up today and restart your fitness journey at an Express Fitness location near you. Enjoy safe, safe, comfortable, and well-equipped gyms from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily. Call 554-5180 for a full listing of our open locations. Express Fitness. Express Fitness. Your goal. Our mission. The Premier Real Estate Conference and Expo returns to Jamaica at the Pegasus Hotel from April 14 to 16. Cliff Hughes Online will broadcast live from the Expo on Monday, April 15. Tune in as local and international speakers address affordable housing solutions, wealth creation through ownership and legal roadmap development. That's a live broadcast of the Premier Real Estate Conference and Expo during Cliff Hughes Online, Monday, April 15 from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Only on Nationwide 90 FM, the new revolution in media. This broadcast is brought to you by Dynamic Events, Conrad Douglas & Associates, Millennium Properties Sales & Service Limited, and Stewart's Hardware. Eight twenty two, eight twenty three. Now on this Monday morning, Monday, April 15, twenty twenty four, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson Smith, is joining us now. Good morning, Minister. Morning, George. Morning, Connor. Morning to your listeners. You would have heard. Good morning. You would have heard the interview on the front page, uh, Doctor Rupert Francis and Doctor Karen Dunkley from the diaspora speaking about what your ministry is calling a parallel diaspora conference set for Montego Bay in St. James, Montego Bay Convention Center, June 16 to 19, and the issues, the, 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 the vexing issues from Dr. Francis's perspective that have caused him yes. to be leading the organization <laughs> yes, he is. What do you make of all of that? Sorry, unfortunately, I, I, although I am a, an avid nationwide listener, I did not hear the full interview, but I did hear a part where I think it was the end of the interview you were asking a question. You asked Dr. Dunkley um, what conference she would be going to. Yes. And I, and I, I said, I'm really motivated to try to call in because the truth is there is only one conference. It is the 10th biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference, and it recognizes 20 years of formal engagement between the government of Jamaica across administrations and the diaspora. And it is it was really distressing to me that with all of the work that's going in with our amazing legacy partners, JN, EM, Grace Kennedy Group, all our new amazing sponsors with National and Digicel and um, Island Car Rentals, all of these great nation-building companies that have come on board and who believe in this project of engagement of the diaspora and Jamaica, Jamaicans at home and abroad in nation-building and in mutual, um, mutual uh, benefit and, and growth. Um, this issue of this, this uh, global Jamaica Diaspora Council is something that I thought um, should be expanded on because we are working with them closely in developing the conference. Um, the Global Jamaica Diaspora Conference um, Council and the Global Jamaica Diaspora Youth Council were created in 2019 after lots of consultations about how we expand diaspora engagement. Because when I became minister, I inherited a framework where there were eight persons comprising a diaspora advisory board. These eight persons were appointed by the minister. And to my mind, and uh, my team supported me in that, and with technical team, and we continue to work and engage with the diaspora, was, well, how can we make this wider? How can we bring more people in? And how can we develop a, a transparent process? So for the first time, we had elections in the U.S., U.K., and Canada across the same period of time with terms of reference and a campaign period and registration, a whole ecosystem around how we allow the diaspora to feel empowered in the creation of an entity that will be the key interlocutor with government on projects 
that will help to, to push forward the issues and programs that the diaspora feels passionate about and that we agree should be priorities in nation building. For so that we even move between the traditional, moved beyond the traditional health and education into development issues, into sustainability and environment and of creative industries, things which are, are relevant and, and show movement and growth, but also allow for different people across the diaspora to become involved. And, and in that, that regard, been, Minister so, Johnson Smith. And, Sorry. In yes. that regard of providing the space, the mm-hmm. avenue for people to make their suggestions and to be heard, mm-hmm. Dr. Francis said he hasn't been heard. You know, he has given his suggestions and ideas, but he has not, you know, he has not been heard. Has he said he hasn't been heard or has he said, so far as what I've been hearing across the piece, that everything that he suggested hasn't been taken on board? He has and said has that he as said well. That he, has he said that he didn't? try to create a consultancy um, which would have monetized the arrangement and, and what might there have been some objection to going through a pro- they didn't feel like they should go through a procurement process they should just offer consultancies and be contracted because that's I mean that's that that, that I understand from persons who are members of that task force before and who left it that that's why they left but I don't want to get into... No, 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 Minister, you can't that and run away from it. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. Because yes. really what is important, mm-hmm. and it's really, I think, what is concerning to me is that this discussion is causing divide for yes. something that we've been working so hard to pull together to expand and to include. Yes, I understand and that. But hold on, Minister. We, we, I, for, for something you've worked so hard and you gave us some history in the formation of the GJDC, but hold on. Mm-hmm. Based on what Rupert Francis and his colleagues, his associates have done, you may soon not be able, to, well, the GJDC may no, no longer be able to claim any ownership to the name because they registered it. How could you not register it after so long? Do you know, um, the technical team at the ministry has advised that, you know, there has always been, and they've always advised, because clearly this would have been discussed on more than one occasion, that the, because it's a movement and because there's always this back and forth between government and diaspora as to, as to ownership and, and, and leadership, um, there's the intention to ensure that there's this broad committee and cooperative effort, which has always been about how do we work together the best. The issue of ownership was less of a technical issue than the fact that we all agreed that this is what the logo would look like, this is what the terms of reference are, and this is the work that we're going to focus on. And there was never uh, an anticipation that there would be any fringe group that somehow, whose membership we don't know, whose terms of reference we don't know, whose that we don't know anything about. I mean, what, what we on the government side know and what the members of the diaspora, because remember, the, this is now the second elected iteration of this council yes. since 2019. This is a body that's been functioning. We have programs. We've launched, we're launching the new Jamdem um, portal for in diaspora-specific um, lines of investment. Yes. We have the diaspora mapping program in respect of but, um, looking but at just, human but, skills and engagement. But just so I don't lose the essence, so that the, uh, because I'm thinking of my listeners, I don't want them to lose it in, in all that you've said. So you've yeah. said that the, your, your, your team at the ministry advised you that it, it wasn't in the best interest of the GJDC as constituted to register it legally. So just let it remain they as a movement. They didn't, they didn't see it as immediately urgent because, they, because of the, the thinking that I just... Um, right. So, so it's not, but, a, it's not, a, it's so not a case where they say don't register, but not at this time. It's not urgent at this time. If, if I recall correctly. And then, you know, we can go back and... Mm-hmm. and, and uh, I, I, of course, we'll be meeting again to sit down um, urgently at Cabinet today, but we'll be sitting down again tomorrow to look, work through some of the details in terms of how we've gone forward and, and, and what 
what we now do. And you're going to need a new uh, name now because you no longer have legal claim to the name, at least in I Florida. I don't know if that is the case. I don't know if that is the case. Oh. And the, the fact is that we've been using the logo and the name and there is a body of persons constituted, duly constituted, who were um, elected in their respective jurisdictions. And then there is this French group that has now said that it's registered the name. I don't so you will fight to keep the name, is what you're saying. Is. You will fight to keep the name and put the history the of the GJDC. Minister, you will, you, will, you will fight to keep the name and put the history of no, the GJDC on the line? Into my mouth. I'm not no, man, I'm asking you. I'm asking, asking you. The conversation that I'm having this yes. morning is, yes. is one which is so intent on not fighting. We have been consistently on an effort and a path for engagement, for inclusion, for expansion. And this is, uh, it is counter intuitive yes. to the diaspora movement. But hold on, no, I don't want to put words where you, where you didn't say it. So let me be clear. I'm saying, given the history of the GJDC, you mentioned mm -hmm. that this is the second iteration of the leadership group. Your website mm -hmm. lists the number of people who've been, who are on it and the various mm -hmm. committees. Mm -hmm. It's not, it, it's not I'm, I'm not contemplating you giving this up just like that so i'm saying will you do what is necessary to keep the name and the identity of well, this thing which has so much history what what's been done in the state we have to look at the intent of this group if this group is truly intent on nation building or i mean it just doesn't seem to be it seems to be I, in fact i can't even divine the motives to be quite honest because it really seems to only be geared at at division and confusion because everybody in the diaspora is saying, but who are minister? Who are these people? Ministry, they're asking the ministry team, why are these people coming forward and why are they getting so much airplay? And why is it that people are thinking that they could actually be a legitimate group? Are you, saying, are you saying as well that the people behind this, we won't call names, the people behind this faction, that they attempted to monetize some form of diaspora engagement and that those no, efforts were... No, I'm asking if I'm hearing now about registering with IRS, etc. Are they planning to fundraise? We don't, we expressly state in our terms of reference that you're not in, allowed to fundraise because we know that lots of things can be done in the name of fundraising that cause for lack of accountability and issues. So, so the, the legitimate bodies actually do not fundraise. We work with partners and we work with partnerships and the ministry supports to an extent, but we don't, um, you know, and through our missions, of course, we partner with our missions overseas, the councils do, but there's no fundraising because we know that that can get complicated. Why is this group registering with the IRS if this is what they said they're doing? Are they planning to fundraise now? Is this going to, so we, we're going to have to look at this because this is, these are new developments, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and again, our intention is to continue to support and work with a movement, a movement, which we now have, including people from Latin America and the Caribbean, yes. the Middle East, Asia and the Pacific, uh, um, Europe, Africa. That never ha happened before. What I mean, changes now about your promotion of that June 16 to 19 event in light of this challenge well, to the legitimacy? This very evening, this very evening, Minister Terry Long and High Commissioner Williams will be having one of the satellite launches based in London, and people are excited about it. The UK teams are um, gathering to listen to what the plans are, the discussions. Remember all the panels, you know, and the, the plans for the program. They are developed with the diaspora. We have panelists who come from the diaspora. The programs, the program is agreed with them, so that there is there is a full engaged process, a fully engaged process in place. This is nobody knows anything about what this other fringe group so seems you, to so, say so, that they want to do. So online. nothing changes. Nothing changes about the plans that you have. Not at this time. Not at this time. We 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 will continue to monitor whether it is this group decides to try to amplify their disruptive action but at this point in time we continue with our path because there is a legitimate tenth biennial diaspora conference with government at your service with panels brought from academia and the diaspora and government and stakeholders and our legacy partners all of that is in train for june 16th to 19th at the montego bay convention center and for that period for that Admit? period, Minister, Mr. Mm -hmm. Francis is saying he, it's, he's not having a conference. He's not hosting a conference. What he plans to do is to review um, the conference that the GJDC is having. Does that ease your mind about do. what he's doing? 
No, so anybody can anybody can review anything in this world. We live in a democracy, and we've never we have been, never been anything but democratic. In fact, as I keep saying, we keep talking about expanding and including. What you shouldn't be doing, however, is using material that looks exactly like or very similar in look and feel and content to the documentation and material put out by the ministry to support our conference together with our partners, and seeking to do it in a way and at a time that creates confusion. That Francis, like. Fra- last it's, la- la- not, it's not... It's not consistent with the ethos of diaspora and La- lasting minister lasting yeah. for you minister um, rupert francis and his associates reach out to you for a meeting to talk about aligning values and and, and the way forward will you accept that meeting oh absolutely we're always willing to to listen and to to to, to, to speak with persons who are of good intent um you know i i i, I really you, you you say good intent, but your your statement, which he correctly said that his name was mentioned in, suggests that there's not good intent on his part. Does that does that cause some problems for him sitting with you and discussing no, matters but, of mutual no, interest? But, no, but he has he has not. In fact, Council General Mayor, who is based in Florida, as is as as I understand. Um, the person in question invited him to come in and talk, come in and, 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 and discuss these issues, and he just hasn't. So I'm not sure if you can anticipate him doing anything else along those lines. Maybe he will have a change of heart. I Maybe. don't know. All right. Thank you this morning for your time, Minister. Thank you as well. That's the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, saying June 16th to 19th, there's one biennial Jamaica conference, Global Jamaica Diaspora Conference, the 10th edition and uh, <laughs> what, 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 more, what more should we say? Yeah, she says it's the only game in town. Get up to 50% off your fave styles during the Ashley Furniture Home Store Spring Semi-Annual Sale Event. Shop two-piece lounge sets starting at $183,998. Bedroom sets starting at $299,999. And mattresses starting at $39,999. Financing available from 6 to 36 months. Don't miss the Spring Semi-Annual Sale Event at the Ashley Furniture Home Store. This is home. Offer ends April 25. Conditions apply. Supercenter, everything for your home and more. And we mean everything, not just houseware and appliances. At Zan Supercenter, we have furniture too. Furniture for your living room, dining room, bedroom, kitchen, and more. Low on cash? At Azan Supercenter, we have layaway plans. Don't delay. Come in today. Azan Supercenter, we're gonna make you smile. Azan Supercenter, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Eight thirty nine, the PNP set to, well, set to have a new candidate. Well, not even candidate. They have a caretaker. They're going to install a caretaker in Southern Trelawney, trying to take that seat from the Jamaica Labour Party. Marissa Del Rimpo Philibert won the election for the JLP the last time, September twenty twenty. She's out of the picture though. She has left representational politics. There is no member of parliament active there right now, and the PNP are lining themselves up. By the time we get ready for the next general election to field the candidate they believe can bring the seat home for them, and they've turned to funeral home operations. Operator and businessman Paul Patmore, who famously won the Larmers division as an independent candidate in a recent, well, two recent, two uh, local government elections ago, and he has been away from the political scene for some time. But he says that he's ready to re-engage with the public. We have him on this morning, Mr. Patmore. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning, Nathan Wyatt. Good morning, listeners. Thank you I so much. You, yes, I greet you well from. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for joining us here on Nationwide this morning. You have taken up the decision or accepted um, the invite from the PNP to run as their candidate. You're now the caretaker of South Trelawney. Why did you accept the invitation? Yes, it's, it's not nearly that I accepted the invitation. I, I was the one who reached out. Oh. Yes, I was the one who think that I was ready and reached out. Uh, South Trelawney was where I was born, where I lived. 
for many years. That's where I do my, all my businesses. So I think that South Trelawney deserves representation. For the past, I would say, to around 27 years, all we, we had had in South Trelawney is politicians. I think they deserve, no deserve a uh, represent, representative, and that's what I set up myself to offer. And you're in a seat... Yeah, Mr. Mr. Patmore, you're in a seat that the JLP has been winning for some time. The news says they're they're putting up uh, Devon McDaniel as their care their caretaker, their candidate. Yes. Do you consider yourself to be a better contender um, in a seat that the JLP has been winning? Yes, when you look on the track record of the of the JLP, yes, for the past twenty seven years. There is no form of development that has taken part in, in South Trelawney. No form whatsoever. When it comes to water, if you look at water, when, when Devon McDaniel take over some 20 years ago, the, in the Larimer's division, we have running water in pipe. 27 years later, we, we don't even have a dam there. So, you know, there's no form of development. The JLP cannot point on something and say, yes, we did that in South Chilani. I was given the opportunity in 2016, 2012 to 2016 to run as a, as a councillor. And Paul Patmore, without a doubt, is the only person right now that can show you something that we have done in, in South Chilani. I have a water project. I have roads. You know, the only person that can stand up and point, not even... The, the, the member of parliament, the former member of parliament that have left from, have done four terms. All they have shown us is that they are good at distribution, distribution of its benefits and spoils. Mr. Patmore, the, when you won as the independent candidate in Larmers, I referred to it earlier, Yes. Those the, the, there were certain circumstances surrounding that those elections. You fell out with your friends and colleagues in the JLP. You stood as an independent. There wasn't enough time between you deciding to make the switch. But you, to the surprise of everybody, well, except yourself and your team, I'm sure, managed yes. to pull out the victory. This time, there's a long run between now and the point of a nomination day for the general election and for you to be firmly in place officially as a PNP candidate. The point I'm making is... The, the, the JLP will have time to now plan for your candidacy to counter that. Do you think that that will cause you to, 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 to not make it this time? No, I, it will, the time will only allow me to become stronger. Remember now, the, the JLP won all four divisions in South Chilani. So I'm the one that need to need time. So time will be better for me. If, it, if maybe if the election was called maybe two weeks ago, mm -hmm. you could say it might be a walk away for the PNP. The, 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 the As time lingers, yes. it is getting stronger for the PNP day by day. The show of force and the show of support for Mama D, as they call Mrs. Darimple Philibert down in South Toronto, you know this, was very yes. strong on nomination day for the local elections and even on election day as she moved through to help the candidates running. The Darwin Profilibert factor, you, can you overcome that even though it's unlikely her name will be on the ballot next election? What, what one thing that I'm sure of is that only 29 of every 100 persons come out and vote. Mm -hmm. Those 70 persons, that's my target market. I'll, I'll be going for that 70, those 70 persons. That 70% of persons that did not choose to vote, that's my target market. Paul, Paul, Paul Patmore is the person that I was always apart from I was born from maybe around nine or ten. I was on every youth club, church group, community clubs, football clubs, just have everything that you can think of. Yes. I'm a justice of the peace in the era. I operate a funeral home. I've never gone anywhere else other than wise from Chilani. You, you, I have one phone number. You fell out with the JLP in 2012, Paul Patmore. And... Uh, you could have, I'm sure, applied to the party to say, well, Mrs. Dalrymple Philibert is gone. I am willing to take up the mantle and try to deliver the seat for the party. But you chose the PNP. Why? I was given the privilege to work with both parties as a councillor because I was an independent. I stayed 
as an independent. I watch how they work. I watch everything that they do. I, I was able to work closely with the mayor at the time, Mr. Garth Wilkinson. Mayor Garth Wilkinson. And I also work with Mayor, no, Mayor Gager as the, as, the, as the deputy mayor at the time. So I, I analyze and I, I, know, I know that the PNP for me is the, is the better team right now. A final one from me, Mr. Pat Moore. You just mentioned again that you ran as an independent um, there in Lormas. Do you think this extends across the entire South Trelawney and this could be a factor in you getting the win over the JLP's candidate when the time comes? Getting support from both sides. Yes. Persons are saying, Mr. Pat Moore, you know that you're going to get more JLP votes than PNP votes. And I can't tell you that I, maybe I, do, I don't really doubt them. I, I don't doubt them. Part, part, this is the first time in the past, maybe since, maybe the past 50 years, that the JLP is on the back foot. When that Ms. Darempa resigned, there was a whole lot of persons who wanted to run the seat. Now they have to just choose Evan McDaniel. He wasn't a person that he never wanted to run. That's the difference between me and him. I wanted to run. And I prepared to run. He was asked because nobody else wanted it. Because with Paul Patmore in the race now, it's not a safe seat anymore. And as you know, most persons come into politics because they just want a safe seat. Mm -hmm. they just want so you, you scared away the competition. Politics. You scared away the competition is what yes, you're saying. Yes, most definitely. And McDaniel is the brave man to, to challenge you. Yes, and I, and I think, I, I, I'm not sure if, to be honest, I don't think the, the, the JLP will use him because I, I know that they're going to give me, try their best to make it hard enough to for Paul Patmore. So I don't think they will make it that easy for me. Mm. Hear you on that. All the best, Paul. We'll be watching you closely. All the All best right, in South well, Trelawney. Yes. Thanks for having me. Paul Patmore there, the man being lined up by the PNP uh, to go on the uh, nomination paper by the time the general election comes around whenever that is. Win! It happened again. People keep coming up to me big enough flow Yard and Road. One lady stopped me in the supermarket to say she loves Yard and Road because she gets both internet and mobile in one plan and how much money she saves. Then I saw this guy who told me that the internet speed is super fast. Guy? What guy? No, and his girlfriend. She's a blogger, so she uses the unlimited social media when she's on the road. I knew they would love it. Told you so. No, I told you so. No, I told you so. Get Flow Yard and Road, the one for all today. Visit discoverflow.co or a flow store for more information. I'm so in love with you Whatever you want to do Is it all right Oh, oh, oh. 
time of the morning when we tell some very special people happy birthday and happy anniversary over on Facebook. Happy birthday to Olivia, beautiful soul, Rose. Happy birthday to you, Olivia. Happy birthday as well to Mike Miles, Christina Ellis, Wayne Stoney. Big up yourself, Mike. Big up Mike. Big up Mike. Mike. Jeremy into Mike, a general. He's a general. Jenna, Jenna. Mike. Happy birthday again to you, Mike Miles. Hope you have a really good Michael day. Michael Miles. Hold on, Tom. I'm a bridging man. Michael Miles. Oh, my God. Subaru Nation. No, my Michael Myers a real, 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 real G from Nepal days. I I worked with him. I'm telling us, excuse me. Yeah, no, no, very good dude. Very, very good dude. Big up yourself, Mike Miles. Happy birthday again. Happy birthday as well to Avril Lamoth, the German small Owen Ellis, as in Owen Black Ellis. Let me zoom up this picture. Looks like Most it. Blacker. <laughs> One blacker. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, you always made me laugh. Happy birthday, Owen Black Ellis. Hope you have a really good one. And uh, happy birthday greetings going out to Alexis Getton, who celebrated her birthday. So belated birthday greetings to Alexis. Celebrated her birthday on April 13. And this one says to you, Alexis, love and God's blessings upon you always. From Mrs. B. Hope you had a really, really good day. Checking over on the YouTube chat to see if there's anybody who's celebrating a birthday today or an anniversary. Shaloy Francis wishing happy birthday greetings. This one says to my wife, Kimon Francis, greetings coming from Shaloy. And the message for you, Kimon, this one says, just as you grow older, so does my love for you uh -uh. grow stronger each year nice nice love it happy birthday to you Kimo and Francis from your husband and uh, Donna Johnson sending happy birthday greetings this one says to my one and only granddaughter Taika happy birthday to you hope you have a really good day Taika coming from your grandma Donna Johnson and Lorna Campbell saying, please wish my mom, Bethune Gordon, Miss Darkey of Bessie Baker, Hanover. Happy, happy birthday. She's 93 years old today. Wow. 93. I hope to see 93. <laughs> well, happy birthday to you, Miss Darkey from your daughter, Lorna Campbell. Hope you have a really, really, really good day. Turn up a tune, Jeremy. A tune too big for play low. Tana's next vacation. <laughs> Alright, that's smooth. <laughs> this is what he'll say to you, Tana. Okay. This is what he'll say to you. Baby, let's cruise away from here. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt this beautiful one, but we have some more birthdays. Bark Drack sending happy birthday to a lovely soul, Lorene White Drackett, from your husband and your daughter. That's Gary and Gianna. Happy birthday to you, Lorene. And they're saying to you they love you very much. And Ines Campbell sending happy birthday to her brother, David Campbell. Happy birthday to you, David, from your sister, Ines. Hope you have a really good day as well. And news commentator, okay, she's just saying happy birthday and anniversary greetings to everybody. I second that. And Michael Gordon sending happy birthday greetings to Gloria, celebrating her birthday there in New York. Happy birthday to you, Gloria, from Michael. Hope you have a really good day, too. And that seems to be all the birthdays. So if you're celebrating your birthday today, happy birthday to you. And if you're celebrating your anniversary, happy anniversary to you as well.
for tomorrow, Tana, we're going to play another Smokey Robinson for you, right? Mm-hmm. That The one that Jermaine will play tomorrow is the unbeatable combination of Smokey Robinson and Rick James. Uh-huh. Yeah? Tomorrow morning, that door. What was I supposed to practice again? No, we didn't get the tune it. Are you going to tune it? I think I did. Wasn't it something by um, John Legend and somebody? Oh, no? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But too much people are going to tune it on. You know that? <laughs> that John only has a little part. Well, yeah, well, yeah, tune it. You're going to find me something. Yeah, One more time. So, Mr. King, tomorrow, Rick James, Smokey Robbins. Mash up the place with that, yeah? That's about it for the show. Thank you so much for tuning in to Nationwide This Morning. NTM, the big show. Thanks so much to our musical, the musical maestro and our technical operator, Jermaine King, and our producer this morning, Sonia Stewart. Thank you so much, Sonia. Thanks as well to our editor in the newsroom, Kimon Thompson. Up next, you have the Consumer Hour with Norgi Banton. And at 10, Cliff Hughes Online. I'm Tana Thomas. And I'm George. Good morning. You've just heard Nationwide this morning on Nationwide 90 FM. It's so hard to live without the love she gave.